United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. In accordance with the requirements of open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel. Is there any public comment from the board? Is there any public comment from the public? Pitt Pass Hills, 56 Whiting Street. Just briefly, um, I'm assuming in response to my question at the last uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting, the paragraph just below the announcement that you just read, I appreciate that. It, it clearly states what's going to happen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, what's that? Just that paragraph. Because <coughs> I think that we should, if it's, you know, Oh, no. just just so everyone knows what mr. Bassett is talking about there's a all of our agendas will now list the following statement the agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair votes may be taken as a result of these discussions not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law and that's just to cover the fact that if we're to discuss things we may in fact vote on those things and our intent is to give citizens an opportunity to be here if, if we're going to discuss or vote on anything that would be of interest to them so, uh, Tom Alonzo, 284 Lancaster Avenue, here before you as Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of the Boys and Girls Club to uh, announce, and well, announce, I guess, for the first time here. It's been, I think, in the paper. But we will be having our seventh annual Are You Smarter Than Our Sixth Graders fundraiser on April, Friday, April 12th, 7 p.m. at the Lundberg Middle High School, uh, like we have had in the past few years. Uh, once again, I'm honored to be host of that event. It's been a great event. If you haven't seen it and you haven't participated or attended, it's really a lot of fun. Uh, really great family-oriented questions and answers where adult teams get pitted uh, against each other with the help of uh, sixth graders from the Boys and Girls Club. And of course, it's one of our biggest fundraisers of the year, so I would be remiss if I didn't ask everybody to participate in that regard, too. You can go to bgclubofluneburg.org, and there are all different ways to help support us, uh, all different levels, uh, corporate sponsorship, all the way down to participating by sponsoring a question. And uh, if people would like to engage a team, enter a team, teams are three people, so we could use that because there'll be 16 teams. But more important, most importantly, we just wish everybody would come out and really cheer on either their own teams or their friends or just entertain themselves for an evening of fun. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, two things I want to do here tonight uh, in the way of an announcement. But uh, first of all, as part of this announcement, um, I'd like to respond to a letter written by Carl Locke and presented by Phyllis Locke at the March 12th Select Board meeting. Um, as Carl alluded to in his letter, there's a lot of effort to examine the alternative to replacing the gas and diesel tanks down at the DPW. To be clear, the effort to conduct a cost comparison was initiated under the leadership of the town manager who enlisted the cooperation of myself, the fire chief, and the DPW director. The town manager recognized that we're the guardians, the trustees, if you will, of the asset, and therefore accountable to the stakeholders as citizens. That being said, should the trustees allow an arbitrary change to approve an asset that would result in a failure, then it's going to be us, the guardians of the asset, who will be directly accountable. <coughs> so subsequently, on February 14th, or subsequent to the February 14th Finance Committee meeting, the town manager Fire Chief, the DPW Director, and the Public Safety Coordinator and I met to discuss the issue. In the meeting, the town manager asked us to evaluate the needs of the respective departments, the conditions that caused the most anxiety by changing the asset, 
and consider the options. The result was, the result of that meeting uh, directed by the group to, uh, the result was of that meeting directed by the group to conduct a cost comparison between the WEX program and the current fuel purchasing program. <clears throat> the order was to conduct the study with neutral and detached scrutiny. The public safety coordinator and the DPW administrative assistant reached out to numerous sources, including people at the state contract level and the WEX level. Data was con collected and consumed, uh, and our efforts will be to provide clarity to eliminate any source of misunderstanding or potential conflict. In the interest of being transparent, I spoke to two citizens, Dave Rogers and Dave Passios, just to inform both, uh, because they had such an interest in the case, that I began to study the options and also that I would be in touch with them should they be interested in the progress of the study. After hearing Kyle's letter with his passion and frustrations, I felt compelled to contact Kyle and invite him to learn what it was so far that we have or haven't accomplished. Kyle has since assisted the group and has provided much insight on the matter. As a result, many valuable questions have been raised, but at this point, we hope to be ready to provide the Finance Committee with enough information next week to make them, um, uh, for them to make a more informed decision, and we hope that all of you are present and that the public tunes in as well. I can't emphasize how important it is to make the right decision in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Lockwood, 91 Main Street. Um, I have three different topics for my public comment. I just like to get it all done at once. None of them regarding the uh, Charter Review Committee, so that's a good thing. So the first thing is something that's been in my mind for a while, which is um, the skate park, uh, this board granted the, st the skate park uh, commission or group the ability to build that skate park next to the TCP. And that was done in the meeting. Um, and I, I personal, personally didn't think that was well thought out about of giving another piece of land right next to the TCP. And the reason for that is that we haven't decided what to do with the TCP yet and we have a limited number of parking as it is and i think the number I, I talked to the contractor today and you know for office space you need one parking spot for every 250 uh, square foot of office space so we're going to need a lot of parking space for that for that area you know that building was so big but it, we transported the kids there um, so I hope, you know, before the construction actually starts, we can have a more holistic conversation about the use of that space. But one thing that I, you know, I'm going to tie up that with something was that, you know, we still haven't decided what to do with the primary building. And at that meeting, we were able to make a decision about the skate park. So I, you know, I feel like I would like some of these decisions regarding the old primary and what we are doing with the, uh, all the other buildings here to also have some expediency on getting it done. We've been talking for a long time. And I know you guys are working on uh, one specific plan, uh, the last that I heard. And I'm not sure if that's what the town would like to see in the town meeting. I, I, think, I think the preference would have been to see maybe three plans. It would probably be a little harder to plan that in a, in a warrant or in an article. But you know, give people the option all at once so then we can pick A, B, or C. We won't be asking for the funding, but we could be asking for direction from the town on, on that subject. So anyway, I'm sure you guys have talked about that. Uh, my second comment is about last meeting I watched at home, and the, the budget was discussed, and uh, Heather asked for um, a town meeting, uh, a town manager assistant, and Ms. Luck brought it up that we have hired three different people with the hope they will be the they will be the town assistant manager, right? And um, and I remember the land director being one of them. I don't remember another one. The oh, the finance director. Okay. One thing that I, as a comment and as a feedback, is that if we have executed a plan three times with a certain goal and we haven't achieved that goal, that plan is bad. So I think we should consider if we need, which I don't know, if we need a town, a town manager assistant and we've tried going other ways and didn't work, we need to then really assess that we need a town, town manager assistant. 
So that, that's what it was, you know, I was left with that comment because you said we have already tried to do this three times, but we haven't actually hired for that function. So that's a, a, a thought. Okay, thank you. The last part is, you know, I, I was, I'm really concerned about how we are talking with our employees. Um, we, I do think we have good employees, and I think we need to make sure they're successful. And we need to figure out an, a way to help them be successful. And I know there was a lot of questions about the new additions to the budget of new personnel. And, you know, and, and I think there's a different approach to how we could talk with our employees, with Heather in this case, which is, you know, instead of saying, this is, I don't know where this is born from, maybe we can say, hey, Heather, we haven't, I haven't seen this before. Do you think you can present to us and to the town meeting because people are going to be asking why is that we need this? Maybe, you know, do you think as a separate meeting agenda on the next meeting you can present, you know, give us some information. But I felt like the discussion kind of went downhill really quickly and I think there's some dynamic within the board that's not healthy, but it's translating to our employees. And we can't, although we appreciate all the volunteers that participating here, and I know, uh, Ms. Adams, you talked about, you know, we can, I'm a volunteer, I can assist more. At the end of the day, we won't be able to run the town with just volunteers. Um, and and it, it, I don't think it's a good idea to get a position that's so essential and designate to a volunteer. I think there's some, some positions that we'll need to do, we'll need to pay for it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we can't, right now we have an open position for the school committee that we don't have someone to run for. So it's, you know, if, though the idea is noble and it goes with the town and what we believe the town should be, you know, we, we need to rely on some employees. And, you know, and it's just, it, my concern with the employees thing is that, you know, the job market's tight. And I do think we have good, good employees. And I think just if, as everybody, we need some feedback. We need to have constructive feedback. And if we lose the people that we have, we are likely to pay more and get someone less, with less experience than the person who just left. So I think we really need to nurture that conversation with our employees and find a way to talk with them and help them be successful. You know, I have people who report to me and, and I always say to them, you know, by the time I'm sitting with someone that I'm about to let them go, that conversation lasts three minutes. Because what I have done up until that point is spend all kinds of time and energy trying to help that person be successful. And, I'll, and it'll be a long time, sometimes you know, six months and many meetings and over and over. So by the time I'll sit with, I'll say, we are parting ways today, that conversation lasts three seconds because that's all I have to say at that point. So maybe you know, try to help our employees if there's some disagree disagreement with them or how their approach, we can say that maybe have that done in a respectful way. So that's all, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if Mr. Chair, let me just res respond to sure. part of that. Um, I really value town employees, and I think what we were doing in that meeting was discussing the budget and how important it is to the budget when staff is added. So right. it wasn't questioning any employees we have or criticizing employees we have. Um, I highly value the town and everyone here. But I started my advocacy and got involved in town government advocating for a staff position for right. public safety. And so I know what it takes to add staff and how important that is. We witnessed it as a citizen petitioner last year, added staff. Right. Um, so in that meeting, that was all about, for me, the budget and whether or not that was a good use of money to add an assistant town manager where maybe I'd prefer another patrol officer. So it wasn't critiquing employees, it was critiquing the budget. And I think there's a big difference um, well, with you that. Know, but I just wanted to say that. No, I know, but, I but really it, was really, it, was, it was really the tone and how it was presented that if I was an employee, I would probably be sending my resume out the next day. You know, like the way you're talking about you, you're asking, you know, but for the budget, I'm not talking about that. But you could say, just as I suggested, you know, hey Heather, do you think you can present us some case for that? Because we should explain that to the town meeting, to, you know, to the people of Lunenburg. And that would maybe would have just been, it's just a question of, of how we say it. It's not what you say, it's about how you say it. And that's all I'm asking. I think we all do the best we can, and I apologize if the way I say things is... You don't have to apologize. This is a, you know, just feedback. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other public comment from the public? 
Yeah, I, I know the town manager has some comments uh, to uh, clarify some of the issues that have come up in the last couple of meetings. I just wanted to clarify some of the conversation that happened regarding our director, assistant town manager position. Um, when we discussed about, yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, can you hear me now? Better. Better? Okay. When we discussed uh, about having the current executive secretary, Elaine, take on extra hours to assist with the duties of the HR director, Elaine already works full time and she can not take on additional duties. Um, and the same situation applies to the payroll and benefits coordinator. She is full time as well. Um, How many hours is full time? Aline works 36 hours. <coughs> yes. Can they work 40? I, uh, so Nancy works 40 hours, but she works uh, half a day Friday from home remotely. So they can work 40. That's, yeah. Can we let the town manager finish a comment and then if you have any questions, we can. Okay. Thank you. So Nancy uh, is responsible for processing the payroll for both school and town employees and handling the benefits for school and town employees. Both of these women are excellent employees, but are already, like I said, full time. After looking back at the records of when the land use director's position was created, the assignment of assistant town manager was never intended to take on the responsibilities and duties of an assistant town manager, but was intended to appoint an acting town manager in situations where the town manager had a temporary absence. The land use director's essential functions in the job description all relate to land use and planning. The only reference to assistant town manager is that the position serves as the unofficial assistant town manager. This was also written by the previous town manager in an administrative organization plan that the position would fill the role of planning director slash town planner, economic development director, and coordinator of activities of all boards and departments within the land use group and serve as the unofficial assistant town manager. There has never been any duties or responsibilities that were the assistant town manager duties assigned to the land use director. The town had a full-time assistant town manager in 2013, and due to budget cuts, the position was cut. Back in 2013, the salary for the position was 67,000. I'm recommending a 28 of position for 60,000. The total cost of the position is captured in the request with the exception of health insurance, which is a family plan amount of 22,000. $800. In reference to the Selectman's Luck statement that Carl Luck had to provide a detailed breakdown of costs associated with the increase of another firefighter at the last annual town meeting, these costs are all identified as associated costs with an additional personnel within the fire department's budget. For example, any increase of personnel, the fire chief has to budget for overtime, uniform allowance, and recertification costs for that person to maintain their certification. So to reiterate, these were all, um, and going back to my correspondence with uh, Carl Luck, I had relayed all this information to him um, upon request. Um, I worked one-on-one -on -one with him on meetings, so it was a transparent process. Uh, but again, these are all contractual increases in the budget. Besides health insurance, these same costs do not apply to the HR director, assistant town manager. There are no overtime costs, there are no uniform costs, and no certification costs. In my research and looking for comparable positions in similar sized towns, I found that the town of Harvard has a full-time HR <coughs> assistant town manager. The town of Ar Harvard has a population of 6,500 and a total budget of 25 million. The town of Bolton has an HR director and has a population of around 5,000 with a total budget of around 23 million. These are two communities with much smaller populations and total budgets. 
The budget proposed is a fiscally responsible recommendation. It grows incrementally in staffing, but addresses both deferred growth in personnel and in capital needs. If we continue to grow in population and service needs, but do not grow incrementally in areas of need, I fear the town will regress and we will not be the town where people want to live, work, and visit. Thank you. Sure. So in 2013, there was an assistant town manager. How many hours did, were, did they work? That was when uh, the town was working five days a week, and so it would be a 40-hour position. A 40-hour position for 67K. Mm -hmm. Which, if you calculate it out it, hourly, it would be more than the, what I'm proposing. So <coughs> offer, how many hours are you looking for in this person? 28. 28 hours, and you're offering how much? 60,000. 60,000. This would all have to go through the process of the personnel committee, which would be a proposed uh, classification and salary range that would be adopted as part of the classification plan and the salary administration plan, which would then go before town meeting. Now, um, you're saying that in, in um, Lunenburg now, 36 hours is considered full time. Is 40 hours, would 37 hours be overtime? No. So then they can work 40 hours. There's no, no available time to work 40 hours for Elaine. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to make her work. Saying if she was available and wanted to work, there is space where she could work. But still, the, 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 need, the need expressed is 28 hours. Nobody has 28 hours to add to their week. I don't know that. She just told you the people who were qualified for it, and one of them had four hours available, and one of them had like two. And, um. How do you get 28? You know, I really think the tone gets argumentative instantly when a question's asked. It's, it's just, just the, it's the it, repetitiveness of the question. It, the, I, and I, I'm a little frustrated because I just rewatched the meeting last week that I, that I missed because I was ill. And it just seemed like you, the board was grilling Heather on uh, information she was trying to provide to you. And yes, I think the town manager should be able to hire people if needed, and, and yes, I think the burden is different when the town manager recommends a hire versus a citizen petition hire that recommends a hire. It's a completely two different sets of, of standards of analysis there. Well, I don't think there should be. You think that the town manager should go jump to the same hoops that a citizen off the street would to recommend a hire? I do. So there should be one process for hiring it, the, the right, and this didn't, it didn't, she never even mentioned it to us. It was presented. That's, wait a minute, the, wait a minute. That's, that's not true. And, and this is not on our agenda this true. evening. No, what? this was, this was. That I could ask a question. Heather yeah, presented on it, question. so it should have been on the agenda then. And I think if it's no, allowed. No, she was that clarifying some questions. And I think it's fair for Selectman Luck to be able to contribute if Heather can contribute. I think we need to be fair and even in people's ability well, to Well, when you get to be contribute. chair, you can make that decision. If I may ask a question? Sure. Um, in terms of, of the fact that what we're all discussing is really something about a budget and, and whether or not it makes sense to always allow questioning. I mean, I think that's a healthy part of government. Um, I think people are supposed to bring different ideas to the table. And, and I think one of the things that came up at the meeting, if we're adding staff, is this the staff we want to add? I think that's a fair discussion. If I say there's, so there's a, this, the staff member we're, at, we're, we're proposing would be $82,800. That would get another patrol officer and then some. That would be my preference. And so that's where I think having the discussion pre-budgetary comes in is, is once money's spent, it's at the expense of something else. And I always like to mention, too, we're not running a business, we're running a government. And so it's all, it's all here because of tax money. And that means every one of us, especially if we live in Lunenburg, and every resident as a member of the legislative body, 
really should be able to weigh in, contribute, think, and question. We're running a government, not a business, and so when we say that every decision needs to reside with an employee in government, every decision really resides with the people. May I ask another question? Go ahead. Um, you mentioned that Nancy Forrest processes payroll and benefits for the school and the town. Mm -hmm. So she does some things for the school. Why can't the school help us? That well? would be up to the school committee and the superintendent. Oh, but, but I mean, you can ask. Mm -hmm. They have an HR person. Their HR person cannot take on this work. Why not? I do know that answer. Why not? Because they're the business manager and the HR director for the school. They Position but we do things for the and school. I, that we do things for the I, school. I, I do think we're now getting into a deliberation that I would prefer to have an agenda item and talk about it as a budget item. And we should also talk about roles and responsibilities of the town manager because I disagree that, that we are responsible for getting in that level of detail with the town uh, organizational structure. I think we certainly have some input and, and quite a bit of influence over the budget. Right, which is what we're talking right? about. And the budget that we present to the town, mm -hmm. who is the final decision maker for it. Right. But in terms of the staffing within that budget, I believe that's the responsibility of the professionals that work for us, for the town. All right, and I don't think that right here off the top of our head, we should be talking about people by name and how busy they are and what they do every day. I think that's, that's an item that if we need to deliberate about it, we could have it in, in an open session as an agenda item. I believe the town manager brought that up. Indeed. <laughs> could, I, could I have a public comment, please? Sure. Terry Birchfield, 118 White Street, um, the chair of the Finance Committee. Um, and basically, I just wanted to reiterate that um, the decision-making process belongs with the town. The recommendation of the Finance Committee and the recommendation of the Board will be the recommendation of the Board and the recommendation of the Finance Committee. And whatever happens at the town meeting in terms of individual line items will happen. People might make an, recommend to amend, whatever. Um, I think the Finance Committee views the, the role of the Board of Selectmen um, to be setting a direction for the town, much the same way the open space and recreation plan is an outline of this is where we want the town to go this is the direction we're going so that when we're having discussions around funding this is what's supporting that and that's what we anticipate is going on that's why when the, there was a presentation of a 10-year plan to fully staff and create paramedic uh, licensure over at the fire department the finance committee takes that into consideration that okay so we're on track for a 10-year plan the 10-year plan also included police officers. And so basically, if we're varying from the 10-year plan, there should be a good reason to vary from the 10-year plan. And the reason why there's a 10-year plan is because the town has been so far behind in terms of all that was lost back when cuts were made um, from state aid. Um, all of a sudden, the, you've seen the schools start to rebound in state aid. You have not seen the intergovernmental aid increase at all and that's where some of the funding for some of these positions was coming from so i think that as we take them in turn um, any of the recommendations that are made and at the public hearing on march 28th and certainly we invite anybody to attend those uh, public hearing uh, where we'll hear more on the budget um, in particular um, and we have cookies in case, you know, we're just really trying to drum up some, you know, come to the meetings, um, get informed, ask your questions, be, so that basically when we get to town meeting, that's where the decision is still made. So yes, I think that basically getting into the weeds over the, the particular budget items at this time might be either premature or in, in my mind a bit late. Um, only because I think that the planning should start as soon as town meeting is over for what's the direction the town wants to go and why the, the um, again, for me, as a member of the Finance Committee, what I'm looking for is what's the direction the town wants to go. The, uh, the land use director discussion that came up, the reason why that, that land use director was created and it wasn't just planning anymore was economic development was all we were going to be focusing on. We haven't been focusing on economic development. Um, 
certainly to the extent that most of the move-ins to town are residential and again it's putting another um, really tough pressure on the budget in terms and what people aren't, aren't necessarily seeing is yeah you look at the trends for the schools and why the schools are looking for more money is the we had been trending down in enrollment and all of a sudden we're spiking up but those kids aren't all going to Lunenburg schools and that's a cost as well so um, Basically, I guess I, I would just request that the Board of Selectmen take a look at the global direction you want to go, look at what it will take you to get there, and um, the Finance Committee is happy to recommend or not based on whether or not we think the town can afford things. But in terms of trying to, you know, I would prefer um, everybody get one of everything because, you know, basically everybody who presents to us has a significant need and has had. And that's the other thing that would be nice for us at the Finance Committee is to have people come to all of the meetings where all of the departments are talking about all of the work that they're trying to get done with all of the resources that they do or do not have. So anyway, that was just all I wanted to say as a public comment. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay. Moving on to our appointments. Uh, the Finance Committee is with us, but not with a quorum. We're short. Okay. We're short. So we... That's just not me personally either. We jointly are going <laughs> to... We jointly are going to hear from our auditors, uh, Powers and Sullivan, uh, a review of the annual audit. And uh, I'll invite you to ask any questions you have as we go ahead, but you're not, a, you're not in session. No. Okay. My name is Frank Soretti. I'm a partner with Powers and Sullivan to the audit for the town. I'm here to present the results of the 2018 audit. I'd like to start off by thanking the uh, town manager, finance director, treasurer collector, and the rest of the finance team for all the cooperation and assistance that we received throughout the course of the audit. Um, just from a uh, timing standpoint, we're out here for our preliminary work um, first week in June. At that time, we're auditing the uh, federal awards, we're looking at the budget, uh, testing transactions, planning the audit, and basically getting everything teed up for our field work, which um, we come back out for our year-end field work uh, mid-October. And uh, at that time, we're just wrapping up any loose ends that we might have had from our preliminary work. and. Uh, completing all of our year-end audit procedures and compiling the audit reports, putting the reports together. Um, so, uh, the field work went great. Um, as usual, we got a, a really good audit package from the finance director. Um, uh, every year that we've done the audit out here, we've got a great package and we've had very good cooperation, like I said. So, uh, that really, you know, helps to make the audit efficient and, uh, you know, makes our lives easier. So, we really appreciate that. The overall results of the audit uh, were that we were able to issue an unmodified opinion on the financial statements. That means that the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with uh, generally accepted accounting principles. All the reporting done has been met. The reports were submitted to the Department of Revenue and the Federal Audit Clearinghouse uh, prior to the due date, so there were no issues there. Uh, the information that we received was accurate. That's very important. Uh, we didn't have to propose any adjustments to correct balances in your general ledger. Um, that means that your, you know, your books are kept in very good shape, that you know, we're not finding issues as we're going through and completing our audit procedures, and um, that's not always the case. So you're fortunate that you have a good uh, accounting department and that the records and everything are in good shape, and you can feel comfortable when you're looking at those numbers that you're looking at um, good, accurate <coughs> Uh, we didn't find any internal control issues that we would consider to be significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal controls. Um, we did have some comments in the management letter, which we have in the past, but we consider those to be um, more of like enhancements and maybe like improvements, but nothing that we consider to be a, a weakness or deficiency in control. Uh, as part of the audit, we test transactions. We look at transactions in all the different cycles. We look at revenues, <laughs> expenditures, payroll, <coughs> journal entries. And what we found is that the transactions <clears throat> had proper authorization, um, uh, proper supporting documentation, they were coded to the correct accounts, they were charged to the right years, and those are 
all important things that you want to see. We didn't find any issues with any of that testing that we did. Uh, just to give you um, some financial highlights, the town was able to uh, maintain its AA plus credit rating with Standard & Poor's, which is a very good credit rating. That's something to be very proud of. Uh, the town's free cash increased by $694,000, and it uh, was $1.5 million at the end of um, 2018. Um, that's a significant increase, and it's important to have those reserves. Uh, it gives the town a lot of flexibility, and it allows you to respond to different situations that might come up. Uh, your unreserved fund balance totaled $2 million. That was 5% of the budget. The rating agencies for like a AAA community, they like to see you at the 10% level or higher, and the town is moving in that direction. As a matter of fact, the, um, that fund balance has increased since uh, 2013 uh, when it was only $212,000 and was about 1% of the budget. So it's steadily increased over that period of time, and that's a really positive trend for the town, and the rating agencies definitely like to see that. So the town is going in a good direction. Uh, you also, your general stabilization fund, you um, increased that balance by about another $1,000. So you, that balance is at $1.7 million. Um, that has also steadily increased since 2013 when it was a million dollars. Um, and over that time, it's gotten up to 1.7 million. That's another positive trend for the town financially. Uh, you maintained your zoning stabilization fund. Uh, there was a slight increase there that totaled $229,000 at the end of the year. And you also established a new vehicle and equipment stabilization fund, which has a balance of $236,000. So the town is developing some good reserves, and you know that's really important um, from a financial management standpoint. And the rating agencies consider that to be very important. Um, and so it's really great to see that the town is doing that. Um, the town's uh, collections for real estate and personal property taxes are also very strong. You collected 99.7% of the commitment. And you know, that's been the case over the last you know, number of years. Um, the town has always done very good with the collections. Um, the total real estate and personal property tax receivable is 2% of the commitment, or $498,000. And you know, your total commitment is $25.7 million. So that's, that's a small receivable, and collections are very good. <clears throat> you also established an other post-employment benefits trust fund in 2018. And you also contributed $100,000 to that fund. And that's another thing that the rating agencies are looking at now, because more and more communities are starting to establish those funds. And you know there are some. You know, the, the number of communities that haven't done it is, seems to be getting smaller and smaller. And so you guys are no longer part of that group. You're part of the group that has established one. And so again, that's something that um, the rating agencies and others looking at your financials look at favorably, that you're taking the liability seriously and that you're coming up with a plan to address it. <clears throat> um, you're, you also implemented a new accounting standard this year. It's called GASB 75, and that's related to the other post-employment benefits. And what that did was change the way that the liability was being recognized. In the past, um, the liability was being recognized incrementally on an annual basis. The total liability was always in the footnotes, but it wasn't on your balance sheet. So what this standard did is it said, OK, we're going to put the full liability on your balance sheet. And so that, that's what happened. So you, if you looked at last year's financials, you would see an other post-employment benefit liability of $25.5 million. And if you looked at the 2018 financial statements, you'd see $48.7 million. And so that's due to the difference in the recognition of that liability. You also had a slight decrease in the discount rate from 4% to 3.25%. <coughs> The discount rate plays a big factor in, in the liability, and when you haven't set aside um, significant funding for the liability, you have to use the 20-year tax-exempt uh, general obligation municipal bond rate, uh, AA or higher, and that's where the 3.25% uh, discount rate came in. Um, there's a disclosure in the footnotes called a sensitivity analysis that will show you what would happen to your liability if your discount rate went down 1% or went up 1%? And I think up 1%, it was about a $6 million change, and down 1%, it was almost $10 million. So it has a really big impact on the liability. 
And as you start funding the liability more and more, you start to be able to blend in your long-term expected rate of return that you expect to receive on assets that you have invested. And so that will allow you to have a higher discount rate over time as you set more money aside. And that's going to also significantly decrease your liability. So that's part of what is so good about setting up that trust fund and beginning to set money aside to fund the liability. <coughs> Excuse me. Your net pension liability was $17.8 million. That was a decrease of 300000 from the prior year. You're part of the Worcester Regional Retirement System. The, uh, that retirement system is 46% funded at the end of 1231-17, which was an increase of 4% from the prior year. So that's good news for the retirement system and also good news for all the communities that are members of the retirement system. And that's mainly because they had very good returns on their investments uh, for, for that year. Uh, just to give you some uh, budgetary results, um, overall there was a 500 $46,000 surplus in operations for the general fund. Your revenues uh, came in $746,000 over budget. Main elements of that were motor vehicle excise at $203,000 and tax liens at five eleven. dollars Your expenditures came in under budget by $708,000. And the main uh, elements of that were property and liability insurance at one hundred eight, dollars and state and county charges at $291,000. That was mainly the uh, school choice and charter school assessments. Um, and so those uh, positive results were offset by the fact that you guys also used $675,000 of free cash to fund the budget and another $60,000 of debt reserve. So any, you ended the year uh, when you put all that together with a $546,000 surplus, which is great. And that's why your, your fund balance went up and your E&D went up. Um, you know, overall, we'd say that your operations are structurally sound and that you have a good budgetary controls in place. Um, those, are, those budget results don't happen by accident. You have to have good controls and a good process in place. So um, everything looks really you know, great from a budgetary standpoint. Uh, just quickly on your sewer and your uh, water recycling enterprise funds on a budgetary basis, your sewer fund balance was $1.3 million, slight increase from the prior year mainly due to connection fees and uh, tax liens that were collected. Your uh, solid waste uh, recycling operations, fund balance was $53,000 at the end of the year. Um, and that was up about 12,000 from the prior year, mainly due to um, user charges. <coughs> so that's uh, really uh, what I wanted to present on the financial statements. If anybody has any questions on that, I can take those. Otherwise, I can move on to the uh, report on federal awards. This might be a question nobody has the answer to. Um, if Worcester is at 50% caught up, so do we know how many years out we're still paying additional to make up the liability, or we, do we not? I think it's 2034. Something I'm not there. exactly sure what it is for Worcester, but I think most of them are around the 34, 36. Mm -hmm. So 2034, we'll see a reduction in what we're paying Worcester. Around that time. Right, because we're, mm -hmm. we've been tr having to fund that. I, I just wanted to point out that was another one of those surprises that popped up one year when we thought we were going to add a policeman. We couldn't because all of a sudden we had a mandated cost to start to pay down that liability. So that was my first year. <laughs> <laughs> nice surprise. <laughs> Are, are you going to cover the management letter, or, or have you done that already? Um, I was going to get to that. Okay, fine. Um, this is just a real quick one here on the federal mm -hmm. awards. So the report on federal awards is required for uh, entities that expend more than $750,000 in federal funds. The town expended $863,000 of federal funds and therefore qualified for this additional uh, audit of the federal uh, awards. It's really a focused audit on those grants. Um, the largest elements of the expenditures, 146,000 was for school lunch and 706,000 was for education grants. Our audit uh, was required to focus on the special education grants. And uh, I'm happy to report that we were able to issue uh, an unmodified opinion on compliance with the program requirements. Also, there were no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in internal controls noted uh, related to the federal awards. And there were no current year findings or question costs. So that was a clean report. Best results you can get as far as that goes. 
And uh, that takes us to the management letter. The management letter, as I previously mentioned, probably the most important thing to know about this is that there are no material weaknesses and there, there are no significant deficiencies in here. But we like to try to provide value as part of the audit and provide some comments that we think will help, you know, maybe with efficiencies or just some improvements, uh, but nothing that we consider to be, a, you know, a weakness or deficiency in controls. Overall, there were eight comments in the letter. Two of those were fully resolved. There are six that are either in process and expecting to be resolved next year. Um, and then there are some others there that are, um, I think, still kind of in the planning stage. Um, and you know, I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has questions about any of the specific comments. Or if you want me to go through all of them, I will. But um, I figured if somebody had questions about certain ones, I would take those questions. Yeah, I, I was just reacting to the fact that, you know, the, the write-off of uncollectible both there's two there's two different items one is the ambulance uh, debt and one is uh, personal property and and uh, uh, vehicle excise tax uh, you know we, we see that a lot last couple of years you you suggest we write that off we're a little slow to do that and I'm just curious either to Karen or yourself why are we slow to do that is there a you know what's the pros and cons of, of doing that more aggressively yeah. Karen can chime in, but my understanding is that um, the, uh, set, the Board of Assessors has kind of been going through a very diligent process to review the receivables and you know, trying to make sure that they're not writing off something that they think is truly collectible. And I'm also understanding that they're getting to the end of that process and to the point where they're ready to start writing stuff off. I don't know if, <coughs> if they've started okay. that at this point. That's right. Um, and then the ambulance, I think, is... Um, a little bit bigger undertaking is probably going to require a little bit more resources. I mean, that's a big receivable. Um, it's there's a couple of components to it. There's an old balance that's on the ledger that probably just needs to come off because I don't think that there's any detail to substantiate it at this point. It's been on for a long time, so that one <clears throat> is $108,000, and then the other one is the more current one, um, but still goes back to 2002. Um, it totals six hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. Four hundred sixty thousand of it is over one hundred eighty days old, and then there's another eighty-five thousand dollars of it that dates back to two thousand two and prior. So there's some pretty old stuff in there, and it's not uncommon for you know this happens in a lot of communities because there's a lot of these ambulance receivables that go uncollectible, whether it's you know, just because of the way they get billed. Um, or people just can't pay the bills, whatever the reason is. But at some point, it does make sense to, you know, sit down and review them and, you know, try to get rid of the ones that aren't collectible. And just to add, when you, um, with the motor vehicle excise and the personal property receivables, just because you're taking the receivables off your books doesn't mean that you're not going to ever collect the money. It just makes the accounting a lot easier. You're not having to reconcile these accounts over and over when they're, like, really small balances these um, motor vehicle excises are marked at the registry. So anytime someone goes to the registry to register their car, if they haven't paid their motor vehicle excise, they're going to have to you know, pay them then or they're not going to be able to get registered or they're not going to be able to get their license renewed. So it's not like the town is not going to collect the money because the receivables are gone. It's just going to make the accounting a little easier and more efficient. Um, so that's mm -hmm. you know, what I would say to that. <coughs> Any other questions or comments from the board or the finance group? Looks like a great job. Yeah, I, I would like to commend the uh, the finance team. Uh, again, we we've since I've been here, we've always had a a, a clean audit and and. The recommendations, as you say, are to add value and to help us be better. Uh, but but I, I, I've not seen anything uh, that said we weren't doing everything we were supposed to do and doing it quite diligently. Yep. So I, I thank the finance team and I, I thank you for confirming that. My pleasure. <laughs> anything else? 
Mr. Wife, I just have one question uh, to the town manager in terms of the recommendations, if we're going to go through those or if any action would be taken, like the fraud risk assessment that was recommended. Like what action needs to be taken to follow through on recommended actions? The process that we take annually when we get the management letter is we sit down with the department heads that um, spe specifically are involved with each of the um, management responses and um, look at what is, could the steps that could be taken. One, I've already spoken with the finance director. We have a draft reimbursement policy that will be at a future board meeting to approve. So that's one right off off the top so that's the process that we've always gone through okay thank you oh, my pleasure thank you Frank. Yep, welcome. we don't have to <coughs> no okay our 715 appointment is an update from council on aging Hi everyone, I'm Sue Doherty. I'm the director at the Lunenburg Council on Aging. And um, thanks to Jamie Toll, he has requested that he would like to see boards up here a couple of times a year, just to give like an update on what's going on in their buildings and their departments. And so this one's quick. We won't keep anybody very long. Um, we have a little PowerPoint presentation for you. Um, we can start with the first one. We like to start with a little bit of statistics here. So what we do is we compare the events and the participation in the events from last year at this time to this year at this time. Um, I did this on March 14th, so the date's not quite up to date with this today. But anyways, from July 1st, 2017 to March 14th, 2018, we had 716 people come into the Senior Center to participate in different programs. Uh, this year, July 1st, 2018 to March 14th, 2019, we had 750 people. So that is growing. Uh, Transportation-wise, last year at this time, we had 59 riders on the van. And this year at this time, we have 62 riders on the van, and that always changes. Um, you know, people come, people go, people might need it for temporary transportation if they can't drive themselves. But things are growing. They, they seem to be growing every single year. Um, everything's going really well. What's the difference between duplicated and unduplicated? Dupli <coughs> unduplicated is the count of one person one time. So say 716 people came into the center. Out of those 716 people, they participated 8,049 times in different programs there. They could come up, spend the day there, and do four different activities and during the week come up multiple times. So that's the amount of people that came in and that's the amount of time all those people participated in activities. Okay, thanks. So it's a lot. <laughs> um, something different that we've been doing is um, we have the front building, the older section of the Eagle House and uh, it used to be used a lot by different community um, groups like the boys, um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, people like that. So we've kind of opened it up again. It's nice to see that building being used at night when there's other things going on in town. Um, so right now we have the Lunenburg Women's Club. They don't use that building at night, but they've come in now. They're there every Friday, uh, the first Friday of each month. Uh, the Friendly Seniors is another social service club that's really not affiliated with the Senior Center, but they've been meeting there for years. They do their fair there. They meet on the second Monday of each month. Uh, we have the Lunenburg Hall of Fame Committee. They come into the building to the older section on Wednesdays, the second Wednesday of each month at 7 p.m. Another new one is the Turkey Hill Garden Club that was jumping around looking for places to meet and they do such a great job at the center of town. Um, maybe we can get some free gardening out of them too. <laughs> Anybody's here? I don't know. 
Uh, the, the newest one is the Lunenburg 4-H Club. And they will be coming in the second Thursday of each month at 6.30 p.m. They're another group that was kind of looking for a place to land. And they've been dying to get up into the center of town uh, to be closer to things. And uh, they came and they did a program with us. And we talked about it. And we thought, what a perfect place. You know, it's just wonderful up there. So, so that's um, what we're doing. Do these groups pay? No, they're community service groups. So Wednesday evenings we're open till 7:30 anyway. So Amanda's usually up there then, but I can't see charging a 4-H a club that has a hard time raising money for themselves. And you know the the garden club does a great job in the center of town. So the the women's club they'll give a donation to our uh, COA gift fund just as a token. And the friendly seniors, they also, they, they will give a donation also, and they'll give a donation to the Eagle House supporters, too. And that's all on their own. They also raise money for scholarships and stuff like that. So, so do you need to be a, a community group to use it? Not to use it, but to use it for free. Oh, okay. But, and we used to do baby showers and things like that, but it just got to be the people wanted the bigger, the newest section of the room. And you have to hire a janitor to come in, and then it gets expensive. And nobody wants to work on a Saturday or a Sunday, and that's just how that went. But so we like doing it for the community service groups. Another big thing we've been doing is intergenerational programs, which is mixing our elders with the children in the school system. Uh, the Lunenburg 4-H Club did a project warm-up, and you can see that picture on the top. Those are the participants. They got together and they made hats and gloves to put in backpacks for homeless people. That was a great success. They brought in sewing machines. They had a specific pattern that they used. Um, everybody raved about it afterwards. Everybody that participated in it was great. Uh, the Bridges Together program, we were approached by the schools. This is where we team up uh, 16 elders to go into a fifth grade classroom. And I know Jamie did it one year. Not, not an elder, but. <laughs> <laughs> it was great to have them. Um, and what they do is they share um, life experiences with the kids. And the kids, it's funny to see how the kids perceive what they think elders are besides their grandparents and what they do and it's really cute and we did it uh, last spring we did it this fall we're doing it again right now we're right in the middle of it um, and the teachers participate in it and it's really a great program to have um, we um, got involved with the community service club at the high school with students coming in. We call them the super crafty students and they come in and do free art classes for people once a month. And they're also doing a presentation at the high school. I think there was a whole bunch of other community service groups that'll be presenting too and I'm, I don't know the date off the top of my head. But they've been coming in and doing little art projects with people and they're really great. There's three students who have been doing that. And then the uh, Lunenburg Boys and Girls Club uh, it's the second year we got a grant from the Lunenburg Cultural Council and we had these performers come in, Davis and Bates. This year it was just Bates, I think. Somebody, something about traffic or something, I don't know. <laughs> but the Boys and Girls Club came down, they participate. Our Eagle House supporters throw a pizza party for everybody afterwards. So we're really getting into the, the kids and community aspect of everything. and. It's a lot of fun to work with everybody. We're running out of space. <laughs> Another fun thing we do on Wednesday nights, because as I said, we stay open until 7.30. Um, every other month or so, Lunenburg Flowers and Gifts comes over and they put on a floral arrangement class. And I don't know if you can see it, but everybody there leaves with an arrangement that looks like they just walked out of Lunenburg Flowers and Gifts and it was professionally done and they did it all for $10. And our Eagle House supporters pays the other part of it. So it's $18, but it's supplemented by then. They have a great time, a lot of fun. They're there this Wednesday night too, as a matter of fact. But it's full, so don't get any ideas. Uh, <laughs> as I said, we're running out of space. 
So um, we could have all these great exercise programs in our large function room, time, uh, space, it's, they, it all comes into play there. So Heather has allowed us to use the Paseos gym for uh, Zumba Gold class and for pickleball. That's the Zumba Gold class that my formula grant funds pay for, for um, a facilitator to come in. And her name is Carolyn Sargent, and she's a professional Zumba Gold instructor. And I think we had 50 people sign up for this last session here. And it's a, it's, they had a video on there, on the, uh, not YouTube, Facebook, and it was awesome. So that's going along really good. And the pickleball, that's facilitated by the former uh, gym teacher at when it was the Turkey Hill Middle School, Sandy Lasurit. Uh, that was slow to start, but once again, you really need a gymnasium to do this stuff. We try to do beach ball, volleyball in our large room. We try to do big birdie badminton, and it just it just doesn't work well. But um, and once again, formula grant funded. We uh, give a stipend to uh, Sandy for facilitating this for us. So that's another. Uh, that one's growing also. Uh, Memory Cafe, that's the other big thing that we're really proud of. Uh, the Espresso Yourself at the Eagle House Memory Cafe. And what the Memory Cafe is, and I'm sure people are sick of me saying it because I say it all the time, it's a place where people with dementia and Alzheimer's can go with their care partner in stigma-free, um, have some good food. There's always this entertainment. Uh, we have Irish step dances coming at the end of the month. We have it catered, a catered hot breakfast. Um, it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, I hired a facilitator for that also, Keith Lancelotti, and he does all the networking for me. And the word has gotten out, and we were asked to do a PowerPoint presentation at what they call a percolator meeting in Waltham at Jewish Family Services, where this all started in Massachusetts. And this is attended by people Skyping in from all over the country. We had people from Minnesota, from Washington State, from Pennsylvania, from the Cape and Islands. And we get up and we did our little spiel, and it was great. We got all kinds of compliments on it. And uh, when I first got into this, just about a year ago, there was only 83 cafes in Massachusetts, and now there's 109. And Massachusetts leads the country in this, which is great. It's really a great thing. Um, funding for this. We use formula grant funding, we apply for grants, we just got a $5,000 grant from the Community Foundation of Northern Worcester County in Greater Lowell. Um, the Lions Club have donated, the Lunenburg Friendly Seniors, our Eagle House supporters, uh, donations to the Council on Aging Gift Fund, uh, Neshoba Valley Medical Center, the Friends of Neshoba Valley Medical Center send me a little note every year, a handwritten note, do you want any money? <laughs> it's like, yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> so and we appreciate everything they do. Central Mass Agency on Aging, we got a $500 mini grant from them. Uh, they came up and took pictures and featured us on their website, and that's going really, really good. It's very exciting and fulfilling to be there. Another popular thing coming up, we're getting the Red Sox World Series trophy. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and that's Sunday, April 7th from 2.30 to 4.30 at the Senior Center. And I want to credit Pete and Deb Lincoln for that one, who are friends with Gordon Eads, who is a Lunenburg resident, and he's also the Red Sox official historian. So I think it was Gordon who suggested it as a fundraiser. So what we're going to do is um, charge a $5 admission price uh, per family, Bring your own camera, have your picture taken with the trophy, and all that money will go to benefit the Eagle House Supporters Incorporated. And already, I think it's been, two, it's been looked at 2,000 times on Facebook and shared about 200 times. My, yeah, exactly. And I've spoken with the chief about uh, getting some traffic control down there, so mm -hmm. we're working on that. 
actually my husband works in Chelmsford and he sent me an email. Look what I just got in my email at work and it was a copy of that poster from somebody in Chelmsford that saw it somewhere and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Too much of a good thing, you know? We also, another exciting one is Ted Reinstein from Lunenburg Chronicle is coming out to do a program on New England Notebook on May 6th, and this is going to be sponsored by our Eagle House supporters. And uh, Ted is going to come out in his book. He can tell you the best places in New England to get chowder, uh, where weird stuff is, um, just all kinds of quirky things in New England. And he will be selling his book and autographing his book there, but that's going to be, that's another little coup going on that we're kind of excited about. It's taken us about a year to hook up with him, so. So that'll be a good thing also. As you know, and I've spoken about this before, Lunenberg is on the road to dementia friendly. Um, we've done a lot since September, October. We've gotten together a large focus group uh, with the town manager, with the school superintendent, myself, uh, the police, the fire, uh, faith-based organizations, uh, Monachus at Home Care. Um, it's, just, it's just a large group. Um, family bank up here, they are now sending representatives. Um, what I mean, we've come a long way in a short time. This usually takes a couple of years to get this through. And right now, thanks to Heather uh, Unitil, Keith, our facilitator, will be able to go over there and train their employees in dementia friendly. And that's how to react and act with people with dementia. Sometimes people aren't patient, some, sometimes people don't know. Um, it's, it's a long process. So we're actually doing a kickoff for this, and the public is invited to it, and it's called The Path to a Dementia-Friendly Lunenburg. Uh, you're invited to help us introduce a more caring approach to our loved ones living with dementia. And this is going to be an information session explaining what a dementia-friendly Lunenburg will be and how you can help. Uh, it's going to be at the Lunenburg Public Library on Mass Ave on May 20th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And we will have refreshments. You can bring questions, ideas. Um, we're also, Officer McNamara from the Lunenburg Police Department has worked very hard on putting together a um, information sheet for people whose families might have a loved one or a friend with dementia or Alzheimer's. Emergency information, we're gonna start a database. So if somebody should happen to go missing or wander off or whatever, you call the police station, he'll have the data on hand, we'll, you know, we'll, they'll know what to be looking for. So that's a big thing. So we were hoping to get that up on the town website. Uh, somebody asked today about um, being able to download a form off the website, so I think that can be done at some time. Certainly. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> So anyways, uh, I just want to thank all my staff. I think they're doing a great job. Amanda is here tonight giving us support. <laughs> and uh, Pete, and Pete Lincoln, our chairperson, is here, and he'd like to say a few words. And Pete. Hi, Pete Lincoln. <clears throat> I've been uh, chairman the Council on Aging since 2007 and worked with all three directors and uh, the Eagle House is a gem in this town. It is the place that seniors can go for assistance, for companionship, for entertainment and Sue has managed to turn this place into a dynamic, exciting place to go. Her staff has been terrific. Amanda's notes are Pulitzer Prize worthy. <laughs> uh, Jamie has done a great job as our liaison and uh, it is just uh, fantastic. Sue is, at every single meeting, is creative, thinking of new things to do, new ideas. And uh, our Council on Aging with 11 members are full in her support. And uh, the place is just a comfortable, friendly place to be, which isn't always the case. Uh, on a personal note, in 2020, <clears throat> we're going to be doing another town census. And it is estimated we have nearly 3,000 seniors in town by that point. 
That's a thousand more people than we have as students. I think it's imperative that the forward planning in this town by the building committees and by the uh, whatever we're going to be doing takes that segment of our population into serious concern. These people have paid their dues, folks. They paid their taxes. They deserve to have their golden years be well taken care of by us. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. Thank, Thank you, Sue. You. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Our next item is our 725 uh, appointment for ecological fibers, a request for a TIF, Mr. Will, and our assessor. Um, Diane Peterson from RRG is here. Thanks for coming back, Mr. Quill. Those. One of are each. they different than yeah, the ones that are in here? They're the same if you wanted a paper copy then. Okay, just paper copies if you want. It's it's in your package. Mm -hmm. Did you do totals on those? I'm sorry? Did you do any totals on those? I did totals on the ones that I had, but there were new ones presented. Do I have a paper copy? I asked Elaine to type, to, to make me a copy, and Thank more you. information has been added since yesterday. So I'm just wondering if you have totals on those. I don't, but I could uh, tally them up, or maybe Diane, because she was the one that created them. I guess I'm not sure why they were added after we got what the What was added? The, the, uh, several, several sheets <laughs> since yesterday. No, there was one. Well, I got one. There was actually one that you had requested from Diane for 2%. It, there's one sheet in the packet. Am, am I looking at the there's wrong thing? There's two sheets. There's a one that shows 1% and one that shows 5%. Is this a stack on the same sheet? The same. Oh, one okay. that shows 2 uh, and 5%. Exactly I think it's thing. multiple. Are they numbered or anything so we can tell which is which? One I would just refer to your <coughs> Google Drive. There's only two sheets. There were two packets that you just received. You sh should have taken one sheet from each packet. Or not five sheets. Packet paper clipped as did I, but it looks like the same. That each member would have, should have taken one sheet. Yeah, all of these are this, exactly the same. Because so you there's guys multiple copies things. for everyone. Where's the second sheet? That's what I think we're asking. Like you each have one of the two sheets. Everything no, we have we, is the same. It's only one sheet. We have. We have. These are all the same. This has Perfect. exactly the same thing on them. I guess we just go look at the one on the screen then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you have one. One says two percent, five percent. One says one percent, five percent. Correct. So, so we don't have it printed out. They are. There's printed one out. sheet printed out. If you return them, I can figure it out for you. All right. So the board had asked at uh, the previous meeting that we w met with Mr. Quill about his request and to look at a um, options for a minimal TIF agreement, a low percentage um, over five years. So that's uh, the one in five percent scenario. And then the two percent was asked um, through Selectman Locke to um, Diane from RRG. Yeah, she misunderstood the question, but that's okay. Okay. In We got here is a one of each of the two sheets that are in Google Drive. So that's one copy. I would need the, all the rest back to to decipher. They look very similar because um, if you look at the two percent, these are the two percent that we have. Okay, where it shows three thirty-seven at the very right-hand column, three thirty-seven and twenty-six cents. 
Yeah. But none of these say that. These all, oh, one of them says that. The rest of them say 335.68. That's the 1%. Okay, so, so, so what's sheets. in the package is one sheet of paper that has two sets of numbers. One is for 1%, and then the bottom one says 5%. Correct. Then Mrs. Luck asked for something in addition to that? Yes. Well, you know, she misunderstood it. I didn't ask for that, but that's okay. All right. Well, what what is it you wanted to, to look at, I guess, is, is my question. Because Mr. Mr. Quill asked us to consider a TIF, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the assessor to tell us what the possibilities are, mm -hmm. but, well... Tell us what the possibilities are. <laughs> um, well, the possibilities we discussed at your last meeting was um, a possibility of a TIF, um, which would have to go to a town meeting to right. get voted. Um, so that's kind of where we left off. You had numbers before you, 10% over 10 years. We had some numbers. Microphone. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. I yeah, sure. <laughs> So we had some numbers presented at the last meeting um, for that those types of discounts. Um, then I was asked to provide a 1% valuation reduction over five years, um, which is what you see in front of you. It's very minimal, so I thought I would add a 5% just so you could see the difference, 5% over five years. So again, if you're going to provide a TIF to any business um, that requests that, there is a procedure that needs to be followed um, with a, a information that comes in a, of the form, gets sent to the state, the state looks at the TIF, there's a TIF agreement, all TIF agreements have to be passed at town meeting. That's the process for TIF agreements. So the numbers are here in front of you. If you so choose to <coughs> present those at town meeting at some point. And just to clarify, the, the um, typical process, this is not the typical process. This is not a typical process. So what happened was the, the building came before the request for the TIF. Mm -hmm. um, TIFs usually aren't provided after the fact. Um, but the uh, owner of the building had communicated with you that there may have been some discussion previously before the permit was um, presented and the building was built and so it's now complete and um, it's not typical the way that those things happen. Okay. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I remember seeing some, we, we were doing some research on, on whether we had done TIFs before, and the best, to the best of our knowledge, we really haven't done, we may have prepared one, but it's not sure we ever executed one. Is that? That's right. It appears there was a town meeting action in 2001, and um, never happened. Okay. As far as we can tell from records, people have researched. So it's unprecedented in this town. There has not been one. Mm -hmm. All righty. So, Mr. Quill, you got anything you want to say to us? Uh, well, I actually started, I thought with the state, what it turns out was I should have come directly to the town. And we built we were built an addition of about 90 plus percent of the original building that was there. It was done in three stages, 30,000, 70,000, 69,000, and now about 63, 64,000 square feet. <clears throat> By the time we got around to it, it would be probably July thinking that, uh, and we'd gone ahead, we needed to go ahead with the building. As some of you came for a tour and see we're pretty <coughs> packed we're not packed anymore uh, I've got lots of space anyway we came in and we mentioned it and we said normally and certainly our competitors have done well wherever they've been uh, that you would consider 
taking a, a uh, or allowing us to have a reduction over uh, a period of time. The last time that we were seriously involved in it, it was uh, approximately 10% a year for 10 years, and each year you would start at 10 and work your way up to 100% of the payment. Uh, that seems, the current information is, it's usually a seven year period or a five year period, which either one is fine for us. Our building is built. Uh, certainly I can blame myself uh, that we didn't follow through earlier in the thing. On the other hand, we were lucky to get to where we were. I had uh, heart surgery and uh, however, everything worked out right. Building was occupied in September early, it's actually the second. Uh, we have got our current tax bills. They are up from 10% to 20, I'm sorry, for just 11,000 on the last old one, 26,000 on the new one. We could use some of that money for more equipment, buildings. We brought some equipment up from our Rhode Island plant. Uh, I would guess that if I were in your shoes, I'd think long and hard before I did it. On the other hand, if I got to a certain point that said, if somebody else comes in to build a building in Lunenburg, uh, and I personally wanted it to be in Lunenburg when I started with the first one, uh, they've got some guidelines and you can follow and they can follow. So I'd say that's it. You know, the issue I have is that it's not only has Lunenburg never done it, but the property has already been built. I, I just can't, I, I just don't see that, how you can explain to the townspeople that you're um, reducing someone's tax bill for no apparent reason. Then he's, an, he's a really nice gentleman, I can see that, and he's got a beautiful building. But we would be setting a precedent for, you know, 1% is $2,091 over five years. I mean, that's not very much money, and I just don't think it's worth setting a precedent. I'm sorry, but I just don't no. think it's, it, I, I, I can't, I could not explain that to right. um, the residents who are complaining about how high their property tax bills are. Well, ours just went up 160%. Well, piece but, of but, land, but, the piece of land we have in front, we paid $100,000 for the house, which was in shambles, and tore it down. That tax bill just went from $100,000 to $250,000. It's not going to get built on ever. It's just a piece of land sitting there. It's a very dangerous spot where the, and they, people explained it to me, there's a dangerous spot on the corner. We didn't want to, I didn't want to develop it anyway. I like it the way it is. So we've got some substantial increases. But you know, the town doesn't charge property owners and um, businesses differently. Some towns charge more for businesses of course. with tax, but we don't. So you're already getting a, a break. Oh. You only pay the same amount that property owners, that residential property owners pay. Lunenburg is a small town. You may not get, you've got a lot of land, but you may not get many applications for this to happen. I, uh, I don't know. But we may, especially, I mean, people who have already finished, P Powell has finished adding on to his place. If he sees, well, hey, I can do it after I finish building, I'm going to go back to the town and see if I can get a TIF for my property. Someone else who's, who's recently done an expansion of a business property could say, geez, great. I can go, I, I, you know, they'll be lining up, they could be lining up at the door. I just don't think it's, I think it's Well, that would be risky. actually great for you. If you had people lining up at your door to develop in the town of Lunenburg. No, not, to, not to develop, to look for TIFs on property they've already developed. Develop, because you start in developing. You buy the land, you build the building, you use it, you're successful, you need more, you don't go somewhere else, you go where you can expand your own. But I mean, but you already did that, and now it. you're asking I, for I, it. I, I, I so someone it. else who's already done it could come and ask for it. It's, it's just a very dangerous precedent. I just can't see that the town, that we could explain it at town meeting. 
why why they're paying more in property tax because you're Most paying of our less competition comes from south of washington dc they used to be in rhode island massachusetts we had six customers in new england none for part of our business all gone big companies employing hundreds of people the one i work for got 1960 when i left 1960 employees they're gone all of them so somewhere along the line if you, and i'm only arguing as my feeling is i was in the seat the other way and i knew if you have an opportunity to, sometimes to do it you sometimes if you know how to do it to start from and we didn't we i thought it was federal state uh you you know you're in a position to do that who knows what it comes up ours was the only piece of land in lunenburg in that area on the lemonster side of the road uh, i'm happy there we're happy with the people we're happy with your fire department if it comes it's just sixteen thousand dollars a quarter is a pretty good little jump it uh, and it has to start from that point mr chair if i may um the last meeting i remember it came up that some some communities offer tiffs as a form of encouragement for economic development i believe okay. in terms of being more attractive and i think the bottom line is if a business can't afford to do business here or can't really leverage the right circumstances then we ultimately won't be attractive for new business or we might lose business we have um, I think and correct me if I'm wrong that the most specific thing was in this project you doubled your square footage but have not yet increased your business to grow into the square footage so you have this new tax burden without new revenue well when the building was 70,000 square feet you had to walk sideways this last year eight months right now we, we got enough room to expand probably at least 50 percent of our sales right now here uh it i'm sorry and i didn't get the rest of it well just that you had doubled your size but hadn't Three grown times. the business in terms of the revenue hasn't gone up but the taxes went up substantially no the, ultimately the revenue will go up uh, Correct. It's just that we're not going to turn it on and say, oh boy, we've just doubled the size of our, our building almost, and we're going to fill that all up with sales stuff, and we'll double our sales. We won't. Correct. We'll creep so along into areas, we'll take more and more of it, uh, and it will take some time. So this agreement, I, as I understand, gives you the chance to grow. Yeah, what happens is we're going to heat it. While the taxes go back to where they would have been, is that correct? When, okay. when your board came from uh, for a visit, if you remember the first time, it was pretty crowded. Mm -hmm. We don't we didn't have square straight aisles. You had to walk sideways. Now all that space is open. We put two new machines in there. We're looking to buy another one. Uh, so we're we're, go we're going to do it anyway. But you know, if a resident doubles the size of their home because they anticipate having a family, they can't say to the says, "Well, we don't have any kids yet, so we 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 can't we can't we don't we're not using the space, so we're we're not going to pay the taxes." I got it. Nobody really knew where we 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 fiddled with the state for six months, I guess, and we never really even thought they came out and talked. They wanted to to uh, talk about loans to do it and and. We just said we're going to get on with it. Uh, so I would like to uh, take either the five year or the seven year. If you don't, we're going to stay here. We're going to work. We're going to do the same things we do anyway. Uh, might be a chance for people, for you to understand more about it. But I know if you go to South Carolina, they catch you at the border and say, I, we got all these towns line up. Uh, we're not doing that. Our biggest competitor used to be in Mass. They're gone. They just came out. They're in the bankruptcy now. So we, we'll pick up some of that stuff. So, Heather, what's the um, procedure if that we offer this to town meeting? Do we you put it on a warrant from us? You would have to put an article on the annual town meeting warrant. Yes. And it would authorize the Board of Selectmen to negotiate the terms of the TIF. And terms okay. Of the TIF. And can, can you just tell me if I'm reading this right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like the numbers are significantly lower than what was presented to us last time. 
Uh, well, because it's one in five. Yeah, right? I'm looking at the one in five. So that. I think the ones previously were looking at a probably 95% discount yeah, or something right. to that effect, so significantly. So the, I mean, the exempted tax on here starts at uh, 1678 and goes up to... Mm -hmm. uh, I can clarify that. 1, mm -hmm. Is Please. that really how... There was, a, there was a misunderstanding in the assessor's office. Um, the note on the field card says the property was at 50% complete when in fact the valuation was at 100% based on the occupancy permit. So we had some bad information when we put those valuation numbers for you together that night, thinking the valuation was going to increase again, um, but it wasn't. So that's why the numbers are lower that you're seeing here on the spreadsheet. So is this TIF really only proposing that we give them a break of $1,600 right. $1, a year? But, you know, $1,600 a year, we were talking about the tax work-off program. And the, the state allows you to give people $1,500, $12 an hour, to work off their taxes. We only allow 1000 and there's this big debate about, oh, we can't increase it to 1500 because it'll, you know, that'll take more from the taxes. And, you know, this one year is three people's extra tax burden. You know, it feels like, depends on the topic. Sometimes we can't spend a dime. Other times, let's just give it away. Well, it's twofold. Uh, I... I I feel like the numbers presented here are kind of insignificant to the to the numbers to the actual tax bill of, of, of this company. But also, yep, I agree. Um, it's not give. I don't see this as giving it away. It's partnering with a, a somebody in the community who's bringing jobs and revenue and doesn't use the same put the same burden as you know a bunch of residents who are loading up the school system they really We're ta this is a tax work off program for seniors I'm talking about this is a company that provides an asset to the town and doesn't and pays a significant amount of money and uses very little resources and trying to be a good partner and help them grow but again what's presented here I'm not even sure that this, these numbers even help that's right and you know set up setting a precedent <laughs> for this kind of gain is just not worth it. We've yeah, never America. done it. The, com the building is built. The people are happy. They're gonna stay. You know, I, I just have no idea how you can ex sell that to town meeting. They didn't just fall off the turnip truck. Well, my, my take on this is that I'm not sure in these kind of situations there is a precedent and what I mean by that is I believe when someone comes to you with a plan for expansion and asks for support from the town as part of an economic development plan they talk about putting new taxes onto the roles that aren't there already putting jobs onto the uh, uh, the landscape that aren't there already and I think that at that point in time at some point when the town looks at where they are and where they want to be we may in fact want to consider things like this uh frankly i think you know we kind of said this when we first met you know you've already built it you already have it it is what it is um we've never done it before we're not negotiating uh to try to get somebody to to to, to put their expansion in our town versus another one um I am hard pressed on one side to 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 consider it. On the other hand, it's it's such small money. I'm not sure it makes sense to even consider it. Right. You know. Exactly. Uh, so, if if someone wants to propose yeah. either way, but I, I I'm not in support of, of of this at this time. Sure. I guess I would feel comfortable making a motion that we have a warrant article to request to negotiate. A TIF with ecological fibers. You wouldn't say the amount. Oh, sure, sure. Um, I that think would this be is what we need after, to see. Just like a pilot, the the warrant article is to authorize the selectmen to negotiate. To be able to but, negotiate. But, mm -hmm. but the selectmen could then give them one percent or ten percent. Well, that's not fair. We we still have the ability to make a decision, but in order to get to that point, this would be mm -hmm. the first step that would be taken. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it doesn't I, I certainly make wouldn't support that. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
would only get Is there a second? 20% the first year. Ah. But they would still be getting second for discussion. As much as they got last year. Is there a discussion? Well, you know, I certainly wouldn't. I'm not going to support it anyway, but I think in taking it to town meeting without saying the percentage you're going to offer them is just not fair to town meeting. I mean, it, you know, 1% is 2,000, 10% is, you know, 20,000. It's, it's just not a way to proceed. Excuse me. Yes. Please. Uh, if we were paying, our, our latest bill from last year was $11,091. We've not duplicated that. We're a little short, about four or five percent short in the new addition. That addition brings up seventeen thousand dollars that's new, that you've never seen. So if we had if if we had a program that said for five years we would do this all, you would you would still be getting paid per square foot as much as I believe quick in my head that you will get as much as you would have gotten without the, the incentive to us, <coughs> all right? So it's not like you would have lost something. It's just that you've got a newer bill for the new stuff than we had for the old part of the building. And We're the losing the, building the increased looks revenue. the same when you threw it. Exactly. We're losing the increased tax base. The, the bill went from $11,000 per quarter Mm -hmm. to $27,000 a quarter. The yeah. space went to 95% or 96% of what we have. If it was on the same basis as we sat there, you would get $11,000 for that, for the new building. Well, it depends on how you go through the thing. But you will get the money back pretty quick in five years. But the rest of us are already paying that in our property tax. No, no. Our, our property tax just I'm went saying, up. I got a brand new property tax for our existing buildings, like your house. We're not bothering that at all. It, we're, right. getting, we're paying 11000 for that particular part of the building. Mm -hmm. And now we've got this new part of the building, and the bill becomes, instead of 11000 26. So if you take the 26 off, you got $5,000 5, roughly more. $5,000 more per quarter. Right? So I don't, it's not like you're losing something. You're, we're getting something in, uh, that's partly in the future. Uh, but without this agreement, the town rate makes more in taxes. With, without it's the more, agreement, there's more revenue the town, the town, the town makes town. more money. That's correct. I would say $20,000 a year, probably. If, it, uh, if, but if you're, I still was getting, you're still getting that original that amount on the first building mm -hmm, duplicated. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you come in. Am I right? Am I wrong in saying no, that? No, that's true. Yeah. I, uh, well, I got a little nope. If I were going to support the motion to put this on the warrant, I would be preparing a discussion for town meeting where the, the selectmen were talking about the economic advantages, the competition in the workplace. Uh, I can't do that in this particular case, so I, I don't believe I, I would support this. Yeah, I'm, I'm am I right what I said? I'm going to have a hard time supporting it as well. I mean, just, it, it just the numbers we have in front of us are so low. For an example, it's not even, I mean, it's, I don't think it's what Mr. Quill is looking for, number one. The numbers would be much higher. We need, a, we need to be a different, completely different presentation to the town than the paperwork that we have in front of us. And I just, it's going to be, I think it's tough to make that argument. Sure. Yeah. Any other discussion? I guess my I'd like to move the question. I guess my last thing to discuss is just the idea of economic development and to partner with people asking for help from the community um, in terms of setting precedents and whatnot. I, I feel like taking a step towards further communication is something I would prefer rather than just halting it here. Um, I think um, business in town is something we know that we lack and this is an opportunity to um, work on behalf of encouraging businesses to be here surviving and succeeding so you know this motion I made isn't to actually do the agreement it's to be able to take a step towards doing the agreement and so I think it would be nice to head in that direction you know we've had this economic discussion time and time again the people in Lunenburg don't necessarily <coughs> want economic development you know 
that whole thing if we stopped I-190 before it came to Lunenburg because we didn't want that. So I'm not sure that economic development is something well, the that we're looking for. E economic development or success of somebody that's already here is different than what's to come in the future. I really think we need to partner with people who have already chosen to be here so that they can succeed. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Doesn't carry. Great. Sorry, sir. Thank you for coming okay, tonight. Thank, and you. thank you very much. Okay. And if there's other ways, if I can just uh, say, sure. if there's Wait. other ways the town can help promote your business um, that we've been working with the business association on, say, whether it be permitting or, you know, um, yeah, if you're having I, an issue. I like, think it would be good for the town mm -hmm. right, just mm -hmm. to get it on your books mm -hmm. because most people are being sought after mm -hmm. if you see what's going on in the world uh, who, who just moved out of New York City that uh, we're not like that it, uh, but most most companies sometimes you can use a little boost to help makes it better and uh, I think in the long run towns make out okay mm -hmm. most of the towns in New England that were productive have big old brick buildings it goes back they go back a hundred years they had the space, they had the people, they worked. Uh, things got better and they didn't keep up to date. And all of them are gone, at least in our industries. Uh, so whatever you do, thank you. And, and I hold no grudges. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Someday you should send down whoever's in charge of the art department in your school and just set up an appointment. <coughs> we, throw, we, we throw 50 truckloads of paper away at cutoffs. Oh, that's all right. Thank, thank you. Okay. Our next item is uh, actually three separate <laughs> entertainment license hearings. Uh, one for June 8th, one for July 19th, and one for July 21st. Two separate applicants, one address. Uh, I do believe that... Okay. You, you're the first to the podium, so why don't you start? No, that's fine. <laughs> Good evening. Hi. I'm here representing Mr. Massey, who is the applicant in these licenses. Uh, I, I have some remarks that I wanted to make, uh, and then the applicant and some people were going to talk about the underlying events. Because of the time shuffling here, I'm going to sort of start in medias race because we have somebody who has to depart. So I've got somebody who's here to talk about the Pride event and then we can circle back and talk about the applications in general. Fine. Just for the record, can you tell us who you are, Mr. Bowen? I'm sorry. Robert, <laughs> Robert Bowen, uh, for the applicant, also a resident of 1686 Mass Ave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Carol? Yep. And as, as I was admonished, don't forget you need to give your name and residence. <laughs> I do know that. I've spoken a few times. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes? I can. Okay. Uh, Carol Hatch, 41 Hilltop Lane. Um, so I'm here for a couple reasons. Um, this is uh, an event I would re support regardless. Um, however, it's also very close to my heart having a transgender son who struggled a lot. Um, when he finally let me know what was going on, it was before uh, transgender was a household word. <laughs> word. Uh, there was no Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and he switched schools because he didn't feel he could get the support that he needed because it wasn't a topic that anybody talked about. He got bullied. Uh, and I'm not blaming the schools or the town, it's just, time for us to really um, open up um, our hearts and educate people. Um, there was a woman here who had to leave from uh, North Worcester, I don't know what the CO is. County, County. <laughs> thank you. Um, pride, <coughs> um, and so I'd like to read it for her. Um, not the whole thing, but some of it, sorry. Okay. 
Dear esteemed selectmen board member, selectmen board members, um, it has come to our attention that there are some concerns over impending events that will occur at tenderness during our first annual Pride Festival weekend. The purpose of this email is to quell any concerns of there being any sort of inappropriate behavior. I have attached the itinerary as a reference for the following aforementioned reassurances. The Friday evening cookout is a family-friendly, all-inclusive event for the LGBTQIA plus community to gather and socialize during which there will be a brief vigil to remember our trailblazers who champion acceptance and tolerance of general and gender and sexual differences. All are welcome in respect um, I don't really understand this sentence. <laughs> All are welcome in, in respect, safety, and friendship. The Sunday brunch will be a PG family friendly event open to all ages, a buffet with a family friendly drag component as well as a discussion on the history and current conceptions and misconceptions regarding gender. And then I have something for our local chapter. Dear Board of Selectmen, again, I apologize because I did not know I would be reading this. <coughs> I'm writing this letter in support of Pride events in Lunenburg during North Count Worcester County Pride Weekend in July of this year. I am a speech langu language pathologist for the Lunenburg Public Schools and also the finder and advisor for the Lunenburg Middle School Genders and Sexualities Alliance. That would have been great for my son. I founded the Lunenburg Middle School GSA as soon as I started working in Lunenburg three years ago because, because one didn't exist and I saw a need. Most people are questioning their identities in general during the formative middle school years, which makes those years difficult for everyone. For students <coughs> questioning their gender or sexual identity, these years can be even more difficult, especially if they feel like their community is not a welcoming or informative one. Our Google Classroom states the following, the Genders and Sexualities Alliance is a student-led, faculty-advised club that will provide a safe and non-threatening space for Lunenburg Middle School, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual, allies, pansexual, and two-spirit youth, friends, and family members. Our GSA will pro primarily function as a support group that will provide safety and confidentiality for students who identify as LGBTQ plus to come and talk about any needs that are concerning them. In addition to support, our GSA will work on educating themselves and the broader school community about sexual orientation and gender identity issues. As soon as I started this group and the word got out, I had about 10 students come to our first meeting, despite not knowing me and not knowing what the group would be like. Since that first meeting three years ago, we have consistently had that many kids every week, with new sixth graders joining every year. Over the years, I have looked for resources to provide to my students to help educate them and feel supported in these issues. Unfortunately, local resources are difficult to come by. Many support groups for this population exist in larger cities like Worcester or Boston. Middle schoolers would have a difficult time accessing resources that are further away given their age. When I heard about the possibility of pride events right in our town, I was so excited. My students talk about wanting to take a field trip to Salem, Mass, because they have read that Salem is a very welcoming community. Wouldn't it be great if we could show the students in our community that Lunenburg is a welcoming place for them? 
They don't have to go to Salem because they can feel supported and celebrated right here in their own community. For that reason, I would love to see Pride events in Lunenburg, a place where we can all come together to learn some new things about people right here in our own neighborhood, a place to celebrate our similarities, differences, and identities, and spend quality time with our neighbors in a safe and welcoming space. I fully support North Worcester County Pride events, especially those that my students could easily access right here in Lunenburg. Sincerely, Ashley Parent. And I just want to end on a personal note for people that aren't aware that it goes way beyond uh, not feeling accepted for who you are. Um, when I was able to get my son to sit down and talk to me about more of the painful aspects of it, I asked him what finally made him decide to come and talk to me. And he said to me, I had come to the point where I couldn't live my life as a female anymore, and I didn't want to end my life. And I'm really not saying this just for dramatic effect. It's a very common statistic for all people that are questioning their sexuality and their gender. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for taking us out of turn. Uh, just a, a couple of comments. We're here for the entertainment licenses. I, I note, too, that the board is or was considering uh, a different permitting process for special events. Uh, I, I urge very strongly that, that we do something in that regard because that would give us all some guidance. I think we're all struggling for how to do this. I know I am. I, I suspect the board is. I, those kind of guidelines, I think, would help us uh, because without it, I'm concerned uh, of inconsistent results discrimination. I hope that we're here tonight to talk about these two applications and not the applicant or not uh, the underlying substance, but I urge the board to develop the guidelines so that we'll all have some guidance going forward. Uh, I also know that the, the planning department has issued a memorandum relative to these applications with a number <coughs> of conditions, uh, and we're certainly willing to meet those conditions and we would request that the board approve these licenses um, these permits subject to those conditions uh, i am concerned uh, with the the building commissioner's opinion though that uh, for some reason the zoning of the underlying property has to be met in order for this board to grant these licenses uh, I don't think that's the way the board has operated in the past. I know other events on other properties in town have been given licenses without regard to the underlying zoning. So I don't believe that's the appropriate criteria and we're considering whether and how to appeal his decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, even if the board though was persuaded uh, that that was the appropriate criteria, I think you have to look at the town bylaw, which permits an educational use in this district. And I don't think you can look at what's gone on there and the totality of what people imagine might go on there. I think you have to look at these two events that are being applied for, uh, the photography event with a lecture about the photography uh, with a Fitchburg State professor. Uh, clearly an educational opportunity by any textbook definition uh, and even the pride event features a lecture on gender issues and gender identity issues again uh, by a Fitchburg State University professor <coughs> so a I don't think this board has to look to the underlying zoning to grant these licenses B even if you do, I think these two discrete events, which is all we're talking about here tonight, uh, certainly meet the educational criteria of the underlying zoning. Uh, 
that's sort of the legal framework I'd like you to consider. And then I would invite Mr. Massey to, to talk more specifically about the actual underlying events that he's proposing. Mr. Chair, may I ask a quick question? Sure. You refer to two events. We have three requests for permits. Well, I, I guess that's fair. Uh, I'm thinking of the second two of the, the Pride events as really being a single event, although they are on two different days, and so you're correct. On two days spread out with a day in between. So is this a, a weekend event looking for two permits, or are they two completely separate? Because there's a request for something on July 19th and something on July 21st. Right. So, and I'm oh, referring, June? I'm referring I'm to them as the same request. No, but you're correct. There are two separate requests for two separate days. Okay. Uh, they are connected to the the Pride July event. So I'm Pride I'm speaking of them as one. But you are correct. There are two separate events. And, is and there, there are an and they are separate licenses because one is a Sunday license and one is an entertainment license. Okay. So, so it's correct. not a weekend of. It's not a weekend. Event. There's no it's overnight request. Two separate it's events. Two separate on two events. different days. When I'm looking at the thing from Adam Bernie it says photography and drone June 8th pride vigil and drag lunch June 19th and 21 bliss fest July 26th and 28th that's that's what's in the memo from so Adam. we have different dates in our agenda it's the the July date because I have July there, you can, Mr. Yeah. Oh, so Mr. The, Massey the, no, the, may I please may I please okay uh, in in response to your request, uh, I, I should say that we, we are, in fact, as a board, struggling with some rules and regulations around ent entertainment licenses in general. Uh, one of the challenges tonight is going to be uh, to talk about entertainment license, regardless of the content of, of what it's asked for and there has been a request from citizens in town that has been looked into by the building inspector in terms of the underlying uh the underlying uh underlying zoning uh issues uh while zoning is not in our purview certainly there is a uh, a response from our land use director in uh that i'd like <coughs> him to come and explain to us i'd like to ask the building inspector to tell us his point of view and then we can and then we can get to the point where we talk about the licenses that were it is in our purview to review okay. this evening sure thank okay. you and mr Thanks. chair can we get the dates for the entertainment licenses for the pride event because the letter in the agenda conflict the memorandum from adam bernie conflicts with the agenda. i had the wrong month so it is july in my, in my notions in your that package I took, when i was writing the memo i i just I put June instead of July when I wrote it down. Okay, I just want to, the just agenda a, being correct is better, part. so I just want to make sure. Thank you. Ms. Bernie, would you walk us through your memo so that we can just set the stage on what it is we're actually reviewing? Uh, so back uh, towards the end of, of last year, Mr. Massey came to see me and said, I have, uh, you'll notice there's, what well, I'll call three events because I, again, grouped the two Pride events together as they were functionally the same weekend. Uh, I have these three events I'd like to host. Here's a quick synopsis. Uh, do you think you could provide some feedback from uh, the parties who would, would have comments? So uh, we held the meeting with the, the folks listed. The, the police chief was unavailable the day we met, but uh, I know he's communicated with Mr. Massey independently and did send some you know general comments that reflect what he has said in the past. Uh, so uh, at the meeting, the building commissioner raised concerns about whether or not the property was properly zoned for the events, and I'll let him enumerate his comments on that as, as he has his own, his own letter. Uh, and then the following, um, you know, page and a quarter, page and a half, is items that were identified as uh, things that would need to be questions that would need to be answered or plans that would need to be submitted and approved in order for uh, those in attendance to feel comfortable with uh, the events being held. Uh, I believe this is the type of feedback Mr. Massey was looking for. It reflects a lot of the feedback that was given when the Unifier event was proposed to uh, a similar or the same group. Uh, and, and most of it is, is really health and safety issues, traffic plans, no parking on the street, ensuring that food and waste is 
properly appointed uh, per the Board of Health and coming from appropriate places, um, not using public land or public parking areas for event parking. Uh, and then some of it is a, is a little bit more specific uh, to the events. Uh, there was some questions raised about the flying of drones and our proximity to the Fitchburg Municipal Airport um, and you know just drones in general. Uh, I know they're more ubiquitous than maybe they were five years ago but there's still a lot of question about what a mass event would do and 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 what sort of impact that would have uh the pride event um again is it's two separate events in some ways it's a it's a vigil and cookout again if there were a fire that would need to be permitted through the the lunenburg fire department uh and for a drag show you know you think drag you think stage you think sound system you think announcer uh, so those things may have some additional permitting through the building department that would be required uh, and then uh, finally for bliss fest there was discussion about um, potential for uh, camping uh, it, it, and again, this isn't something that's in front of you, so I, I guess the, the, the fifth item in my memo is probably uh, not relevant to this conversation. Okay, thank you. So that, so that regardless of the opening comments, we're, we're talking about the, the requirements for an entertainment license, the requirements for a Sunday entertainment license, vis-a-vis -vis the input from the fire chief, the police chief, the uh, Board of Health, and, and things that would be generic to any entertainment license on, on that level? Yes and no. Um, individual entertainment licenses or one day entertainment license or an event entertainment license I would say yes I know you can issue annual entertainment licenses and those come with a different set of, of issues or, or requirements uh, so yeah I think these are, are, are fairly in line with what was requested two years ago when uh, Unifier came to town and the board said oh we've got this entertainment license we really need to hear from these departments we need to understand how this would impact how we would handle it, how we would mitigate it, and that was sort of the, the same discussion that we had. And you know, all events being different, flow of traffic, uh, people in attendance, uh, layouts, and, and that that type of thing. Uh, so these are, are reflective of that, but each set of information would need to be individualized to the event. Okay. And then now there's some underlying reference to the building inspectors point of view to you he is here so i'll, I'll let him use his words okay great mr chairman members of the board i'm gary rhodes i'm your building commissioner um on march 18th of this year i wrote dr massey an order uh it was an enforcement order that what he was proposing was in violation of zoning but to have gotten there, I'd like to give you a little history as to why we were, I've made those statements. Two years ago, in front of the Board of Appeals, Dr. Massey came and was proposing... Okay, could you speak a little louder and perhaps we could turn up the mics for in the room here. Can I... Be, oh, is that, does that work? I'll, I'll speak louder too. Um, approximately two years ago, Dr. Massey came to the Zoning Board of Appeals requesting a special permit. And that special permit was to allow for basically an activities out there for camping, all of you know different types of uses out there. At the time and during the hearing, I reviewed his application and I felt that what he was proposing was did not meet the zoning and what he was proposing was not consistent with each other and I recommended to the board at that time that the board denied their application because I felt what he was doing was a use variance. As a result of that, the board offered and Dr. Massey accepted that um, his request would be withdrawn. Shortly after that, we met with Dr. Massey to kind of get a sense of what it was he wanted to do with his property. And as part of that proposal, he, we talked about the unifier. And when I looked at the whole process, I felt that he, what he was proposing really didn't fit within our zoning bylaw. 
the, our zoning bylaw has a provision that if it's not allowed, if it's not specifically authorized within the bylaw, you can't do it. The Board of Appeals doesn't have the authority to grant it. It just can't be done. And what I felt he was doing didn't meet it. So what we proposed to Dr. Massey at that time was to go to the planning board, work with the planning board to come up with something that would work. After that time, I felt, it was my understanding, and I think Adam can speak to it better, I don't believe he did that. He didn't take advantage of that. Um, at the time we met with him, we talked about the unifier. And when I looked at it, I felt that when I gave, I felt that it was like a one-time event. Um, I felt that zoning didn't incorporate, a person can use a, a, their property for an event or something like that, just, just they can. Um, but when they start creating a business, and this isn't just one event, but multiple events, that's why I came to the point just recently of writing the enforcement order. Because it wasn't one event, it's been multiple events. In October, late last year in October, I received a request for an enforcement from the neighbors out in that area. Um, they were kind of vague in what they were asking, so I said, look, I really need, if you feel like they're in violation, tell me the history. Give me some documentation that shows what it is they've been doing out there. Because what I saw was, I saw the Unifier, which was a four-day event, but it was one event. I heard that they had tried some other things that didn't, weren't totally successful. The neighbors came back to me with a very detailed report that was taken off, their, off of Dr. Massey's website. And what it basically showed was there was almost like 29 events that were held out there. All of a sudden now I'm sorry, saying this isn't one event. This is an ongoing activity that's out there. When I also, at that point when I received the complaint, I, I provided it for Dr. Massey. Um, I asked that he provide me with a legal brief as to why he felt what he was doing would be allowed by zoning. He did provide that. And what I did at that point is I discussed that with our town council. I met, I, uh, met with them. I gave them all the documentations that were submitted on both sides. We looked at, was this an educational use by our bylaw or within the general laws? And we, I came to the conclusion that it was not. There's certain criteria they have to meet, and they weren't meeting it. I'm not saying that one event wasn't educational, but there's a lot of criteria that goes with it. They weren't meeting it. That's why, as a result of that, I wrote this enforcement letter that says, no, you can't do it. Um, he does have the right to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I, I encourage him to do that. Because if I'm wrong, and if the board oversee, overview, overturns me, that gives him his rights. You know, he can do that. But to proceed forward at this point, I think, is premature. Um, I would encourage the board to allow Dr. Massey to appeal. And if the, he's successful in his appeal, <coughs> then possibly give his licenses, uh, enter, his entertainment and Sunday, if the board feels it's appropriate. But at this point, I really believe that what he's proposing doesn't comply with zoning, based on what I've seen so far. If the board has any questions, I'll gladly entertain them. Thank you. Did you want to respond? Thank you. Uh, as, as I outlined in my remarks, I, I do think these events are educational and we do comply with zoning. Uh, if we have to go out and create an entity uh, that is a nonprofit for educational purposes, uh, we can do that. Uh, is that really what the town wants people to do who want to have a few events on their property? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, again, though, I go back to the notion that for this board to grant these entertainment licenses, you don't need to comply with the zoning. Uh, there's a town fair on private property in town, which is very similar to the art exhibit lecture and sale that Mr. Massey is proposing. This board did not consider the underlying zoning when it granted that entertainment license. Uh, it, 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 I would urge this board to grant them 
and put whatever restrictions this board wants to put on them. Uh, it is up to Mr. Massey to address the, the zoning issue and appeal it or not at his own peril, but that piece of it is beyond the jurisdiction of this board. So uh, I appreciate the sentiment that this is premature and we should go there first and then come back to this board, uh, but I don't think we have to. I think this board can act on its own, uh, send a message if it wants to, that it wants to encourage uh, these types of innovative uses of private property for the benefit of all the citizens in this town and leave Mr. Massey to fight his fight with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Darren Massey, 300 Holman uh, Street. It's good to be here. It's good to see you all. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. Look, th this is a gorgeous property. It's one of the most gorgeous properties in town. Uh, it was left by the lanes. It has a phenomenal art legacy to be shared. I don't have to be living there on my own. My ethics and my philosophy is to open it up, to share it. I don't have to be keeping my money to myself. Uh, in this particular situation right now, I have enough money to pay for a lawyer to be here. Other residents do not. I do not feel comfortable being here with a lawyer representing me to be able to share my property for the benefit of the majority of the residents in this town. Just speaking, just speaking straight. None of us are gonna be here in 70 years, 80 years. The property will be here, either it'll be houses or it'll be a benefit for the residents. We could share it as is, we could make it a nonprofit, we could drive other residents to do the same, but they, they won't have the resources. I counted up, uh, had this discussion with Adam at times, how many large properties are left in this town. Not many. A couple farms. I counted eight in my last count. So I happen to be one of them. We'll lose them. They'll go to housing. They'll go to multi-development. There are ways to protect these properties in open space. We have a few vehicles left. This is one of the vehicles. We have functions that would serve multiple residents in this town of all ages in a safe way. We have the GSA looking for space. We have, we heard earlier, the, the Gardens Association. I'm a member of them. They've come over to my place. Some neighbors have complained that the, the Garden Club has come over to my place. They're not gonna hurt anybody. They love my place. It's there to be shared. I've come here before. I've tried to come every single meeting on my own time. Every time we've talked about entertainment licenses. I've asked for a number. How many events is, is a use? Is it one? Is it zero? Is it five? Just give me a number. Adam asked me, very appreciative, we have a land use director in this town. Adam said, give me six months. You have proposals, give me six months. As he said tonight, I came in December, six months before Christmas. He said, give me two weeks, I'll get back to you. We'll have a meeting, the usual, fire, traffic, police, safety, conservation, make sure we keep the land well preserved. DPW, Jack was here earlier. All good people, all reasonable people. We've sat down with them before for the Unifier Festival. Came up with terms, we complied with them. None of the complaints were, unfounded, were, were founded. We had four days of music, 
and then the rest of the time for that year some of these people in this room who complain have used have walked on that land I welcome people using that land in a safe reasonable way I've always come here and said let's just be reasonable so I came to Adam he said he'd have the meeting I didn't hear back two weeks there was another resident who kindly stepped in to ask Adam for a response just name the terms we'll sit down with anybody didn't hear anything so we ask so I come back to the next meeting where we talk about an entertainment license <coughs> so here I am again Adam sends a, his letter he described tonight it has some vagues it has some provisions let's have a meeting let's figure out the terms let's sit down again with fire chief traffic uh, DPW conservation no problem we're all reasonable I believe in this room so I happen to be able to afford a lawyer uh, as I said I, I am extremely uncomfortable with that fact but still we have this property and I do not wish to divide it into houses at this time it has the art legacy I believe art makes business for this town I believe art makes public health for this town I believe we'd get along better if we got together over issues of art I'm a mental health practitioner I believe that art is one of the vehicles to provide for better community health I also attempt to work on the business association so to marry the two art and business 800 billion dollar industry here we have a phenomenal group of photographers if I talk about just the photography event phenomenal group of amateur photographers and professional photographers some of them gladly on the, uh, the business association others ask give us a vehicle to promote our work so we many residents the Lunenburg uh, Cultural Council creates an arts festival phenomenal success look forward to it growing year over year specialize in photography because we have so many photographers you go on Facebook and you see these most beautiful pictures of our lakes incredible you see the discussion around the art about the lakes we should be having calendars of Lunenburg with all our photographers our own town website has the most amazing pictures from Eric Vickery so Eric Vickery steps forward and says a photography fair would be fantastic I have a whole lecture on climate change it's the number one pressing political issue of our time right now let me come and present my climate change lecture which I obtained international grants to go to Iceland and Greenland to present at this photography fair it'll be educational so th th that is fantastic we have a respected professional photographer in town willing to give this showing what quality professional academics and artists we have in town we have another, another member in this audience who's willing to give a lecture on the Lane Collection few people know about the Lane Collection and it came out of Lunenburg it's a phenomenal collection primarily of photographs at the MFA it's one of their jewels at the MFA and at the Fitchburg Art Museum phenomenal lecture, uh, <coughs> legacy to promote <coughs> for our students and our adults to inspire them year over year the photographs of the properties around town of our barns to continue to promote the heritage of this town continue to work with the Grange and the Agcom to promote the heritage of this town for the, again for the photography event the historical society says this is a phenomenal idea what we'll do is we'll bring all our historical photographs that most people haven't seen and we'll do the retrospective we'll show photographs from a hundred years ago and we'll go out and we'll take photographs right now 
and we'll compare the difference of what the town used to look like and what the town looks like now, and we'll ask the question, what would it look like in 100 years from now, when all of us in this room aren't here anymore? I think that's a fantastic project. And so they started to do that on Facebook. And that's the most popular item on Facebook right now, showing retrospectives and people guessing where the photographs are taken. Fantastic. That's the photo. One day we're asking for the opportunity on a parcel that's 140 acres, that's 800 feet from the nearest abutter. Uh, we're not talking 50 feet, 100 feet, 500 feet. And it's further afield from other abutters. I thought after the music festival to try to be more reasonable. And so, I th so to go from music to photography, because the most complaints, I believe, last time were about noise. So let's do a photography event where there won't be noise. So that's one day, one Saturday, eight to four. That was proposed for uh, June 8th. The Lunenburg Cultural Council decided, chose to have their art fair on June 8th. So if you do approve with contingencies or not, I would ask for June 8th or the alternate date that I proposed in July. Uh, just moving quickly to the Pride. We've heard from Carol, I apologize that um, Sally Powers from Nooko couldn't stay. She did stay for an hour. You may have seen her sitting. Uh, she's available to come back. But she did send her email, which you have. She also included the email from the local GSA, which you have, uh, which was read here tonight, at least in part. They're asking for a cooking fire. So I'm not asking for a bonfire. I propose doing the bonfire in my naivety back in the day. Uh, so a simple cooking fire for people to gather around a cooking fire, again, with appropriate permitting and agreement with the fire department, uh, and a short vigil to honor and respect the legacy of people who have forwarded uh, gender rights in our country, which are incredible. That's two and a half hours. That's what I'm asking for, two and a half hours. That's on Friday, July 19, 4 to 6.30 p.m. And then the third request for the Sunday permit is um, Sunday, July 21st, 11 to 3. That's the combination of the brunch, uh, the drag performance, showing what it's like and sharing their story in a safe, uh, kind way of what it's like to come out. And then the professional talk by the two lectures at Fitchburg State about gender. And again, it's uh, <coughs> myself asking them what would be an educational component and what is needed at this time. And they came back with the title of the talk to be Misconceptions and Conceptions of Gender. Obviously for the, gen for the education component, but also for we're just beginning this conversation as individuals, as a community, as a town, state, country. So timely lecture. So that would be Sunday, 11 to 3. I don't know what that is, four hours? I don't know. And then everyone goes home. Uh, again, thank you. I, I, uh, <coughs> I appreciate this time. I appreciate your consideration. Obviously open to any questions. So them as fully as possible tonight. I have a question. Please. Um, what do you think about for attendance at those events? Right. So again, similarly, to, uh, trying to understate it compared to the past. So in the past, the, uh, the Unifier Festival was approved for 500. So l looking for, I think I may have mentioned um, 250 to 350. So 350. Uh, for each of them? No, max at 350. I think uh, there might be 350 at the Sunday. There might be 350 at the pho photograph, but I could see maybe 150 on the Friday night. And how would you mm. control the right. amount of people? 
Well, it's, it's an interesting process right now because the more uh, talk about this, the more attention this gets and the more awareness. And so uh, I agree, then there's a necessity to a traffic control. To control. Absolutely. Being so I've met with the chief of police <coughs> recently. We've talked about the traffic. I've sent, as Adam mentioned, I've sent you the brief outline that he's always mentioned. And he says, in his words, he's always mentioned. And we would include, uh, obviously, the traffic control, the, the limiting number of people. We did not exceed it in Unifier. We controlled for that through counting. We'll control again through counting, registration counting. And in case the, the word is mentioned of registration, not looking for this to be a business. We're not charging to make money. We're charging to provide for the porta potties the outline that we've sent in the application for the traffic detail, if that's what the chief advises, whatever the expenses are. Okay. Mr. Chair, if yes. I can contribute some thoughts and we can maybe see if there's other people to hearing, right? For yeah, I was going to get there. Hearing. Okay, um, so I don't want to take up too much more time. Um, the first thing I want to say is that as we discuss the permits, I just want to make it very clear that any anything I think or do has nothing to do with whether or not I support the events and the intention of the events and uh, photography and pride. So I think it, it's going to come more down to all the data with zoning and the information we have. And so I don't want to make any discussion on whether or not we support the content or the events in terms of, of their nature. But um, also just want to say, too, that I think we've all, there's, there's a couple years of history here. I um, went to the unifier, you walked me around and showed it to me, so I really understand the property. Um, and then there's also been a lot of input from abutters. And so one thing you had said was um, these events to benefit the majority of the town, but I think at the same time, um, the part of the town that really is impacted by them are the abutters of the property. And so even if it may, things may benefit the majority of the people here, I think we really have to study with this being a residential property how it impacts um, the people that abut the property. Um, I think there's got to be something weighted where, where these events and um, the traffic and crowds, how they impact those people is more important than maybe how they impact me um, who maybe live several miles away and, and whatnot. So right. those are just That's, some of my that thoughts. Would, that um, would be agreeable if, if I could just really respond. What we're really missing is we've been working on a policy. You know that. <coughs> we all know that there's a policy. And I think what comes into the special event permitting policy that will really benefit from is um, quantity of events that can be held on residential property. And I think that's really what probably goes with the history here, is that we don't want somebody to not be able to have a wedding and somebody reference the town fair on private property. And so I, I really, really like consistency. And in the absence of the policy being finished, it's hard to be consistent. Um, but in this case, I think the thing that really comes up is the quantity of events is ceaseless. And that may not fit the norm for what's allowed on residential property. And then, um, you know, we have here sort of an order has been placed on the property from our building commissioner, which I, I do feel has to be given thought by us. I, I certainly don't want to circumvent um, all the information that we've been given. And um, eventually, I think I'll make a motion that we keep these hearings open, because I don't feel like I'm at a place where I would be able to decide on these events tonight. But I mean, since they hear, there's probably people that still want to speak, I'll hold making any type of, of motion. <coughs> so if I could resp just respond to what the neighbors there, I would like to point out there are neighbors who are not here. There are abutters who are not here, and they've chosen not to be here. Uh, there's, there is a mix. There are some who are for, and there are some who are neutral. So I just want to make a point that uh, to look at the underlying reasons why they're not here, uh, uh, at this time, I'll choose not to share those reasons, uh, though to state the obvious, there are certain um, abutters here not here. 
uh, for their own concerning reasons. So, hmm. uh, to the one point. Yeah. To the yeah. other point, uh, also, the, you may have referenced ceaseless events. Uh, I would refute that, and I would question what um, somebody is looking at on Facebook and what is actually happening on the ground. Uh, on the ground, I've invited uh, multiple times people to come see what's happening on the ground. Uh, some of the neighbors in support have attended, but certainly many, many uh, critics, most critics, have not chosen. I could think of the exception of two. And these are hard issues because, I mean, for the last two years, there's, I mean, you can reflect on, on both both sides. I mean, a lot, a lot of the butters have spoken about the noise and commotion and ceaseless events, and yet, like I said, I've taken out the time to go and learn about the property. So what I'm sort of, sometimes I'm thinking out loud more than giving opinions just for the sake, and I think what we're really missing is the the special event permitting policy and finalizing that so we have a lot of more guidance <coughs> on how to and when to um, give the permits for special events because I, I don't think anybody would ever expect that a residential property could have endless special events but we lack the formal policy which has been being worked on so I think that will help all of us. I understand that. I, I would like you to take credence to my attempt to continue to be reasonable and keep downplaying, I don't know when, besides for leaving town, but I, I don't know where you, where, I'm looking for the level of number of events. So for this year, I've requested these three, along with the others, special permits. But do I go to two? Do I go to one? That's the question we asked a few weeks ago. How many events have there been this year? I just want to make sure I'm accurate when I say zero because I've had pri a private party. Okay. So I just want to make sure, I want to give you an honest answer. Okay. So I, nothing I immediate is coming to, to mind. That, that the number of events is one of several criteria that we've been discussing as potential yeah. pieces of, the, of a policy. And I, and I just would like to outline, and I'm sure you appreciate this, that it, you know, Adam has been working on this since the first day you met him. Uh, it, yeah. It's not for lack of effort that we don't have a policy. It's, it's, a, it's a thorny issue, and we're working it as hard as we can. Right, I, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, having said that, is there anyone who feels the need to be heard at the moment? Please. Can you all hear me? I'm Helen Obermeyer Simmons. I live at 323 Northfield Road in Lunenburg. And I think I'm about a mile and a half from Darren's property. Um, I am a former professor at Fitchburg State University where I taught for 35 years in the communications media department. And so I am the one who's willing to speak about the Lane Collection at the photography event. I don't know if you all know this, but Ansel Adams used to come and spend summers on the Lane property and so and made photographs in Lunenburg. Uh, and the, the, the Lane collection, which has gone to the MFA in Boston, I believe is over 6,000 items are at the MFA. It's one of the highlights of the MFA. They have a curator whose only job is to curate the Lane collection. Uh, one of the very special items that they have is a Charles Sheeler painting of barns in, New in uh, Lunenburg. There are barns. And so I think that the idea that this is an opportunity to showcase what has happened in Lunenburg in terms of photography and in terms of art is extremely important. Uh, someone mentioned that they weren't sure about the educational nature of it. Well, I do have a Master of Fine Arts in Photography from Rochester Institute of Technology, and so I will certainly be speaking about it from a historic and educational point of view. Really, um, to educate the public about 
how important this property is in terms of the history of art, the history of art collecting. Um, some of the Lane Collection did go to the Fitchburg Art Museum. You can see a few of the things there. Um, but the other part of the property that's really unique is that it's a very old and historic structure that's been added on to. And I think just the nature of the architecture itself, uh, that would be another topic for another day. Um, but as an artist, which you all know, because I talked about it before, about the open studios concept a few weeks ago, um, I am a practicing artist. I exhibit my work all over New England. And my work actually is photography based. And so I would just encourage you to consider that as you consider this proposal. Thank you. Hi, good evening, Jim Levac, 33 Lancaster Avenue. Um, I can't speak to the zoning issues. I'll, I'll leave that to the people who are smarter than I am. Uh, as a former uh, videographer and, and one who's toured the Lane property, I think that that is a gorgeous piece of property that should be uh, encouraged for public use. I really do appreciate that Dr. Massey is willing to do this with his private property. Um, relative to the Pride events, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. This is the uh, cornerstone for the modern gay rights movement. Um, so it's very historical and significant uh, event. I know that uh, you've heard from the middle school advisor for the GSA. The high school advisor for the GSA had been out and that, that group has, uh, is somewhat defunct at the moment. Uh, my daughter was a member of that and had been working with, uh, with the advisor on trying to find a pride event locally for the community like a pride prom or something like that um, and i know of several students who are uh, self-identifying as as uh, gender fluid uh, as well as tra transgender um, i think having an opportunity for those people and anybody really um, to come together in forms of celebration of the diversity that this town uh, claims to want uh, is a good thing and um, I leave this to, to like I said the smart people to figure out that the hows and what's but it seems to me that Dr. Massey is extremely reasonable in uh, working with the town on coming up with whatever uh, restrictions are, are required to make these events happen for the benefit of members of the community thank you Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street. Uh, I'd like to speak to two of the issues. Um, one being the policy that you guys are working on. This is something that uh, what I know about it going on in the background since the last time it was brought before you, that policy can't possibly be finalized before this summer at the earliest, in my eyes. There are some real problems with the um, edit that you saw last time i raised some issues uh through the prop proper channels and uh it still needs to go all to all the boards before it goes to public hearing it's this summer at the earliest that you're going to have a policy to even really consider to vote on secondly on the zoning we're what two years from the event that you keep talking about there was all kinds of discussion around the time that we finally did say, okay, you can have this event. Um, and uh, yeah, we did call it a one-time event, but we also promised to try to work towards a workable solution so that events similar to that and in a, to a lesser extent, the ones that he's proposing now, would, we'd find a way to get zoning to work for it and get the town on board with it. And if not, then we wouldn't be able to do it. Two years down the road, we're having the same arguments over again. Nothing's in place. It's not Mr. Massey's fault, totally. I think 
he could have been a little more proactive yes maybe but we also promised to work on it and we haven't thank you Tom Alonzo, 284 Lancaster Ave. Um, the first time I met Dr. Massey and his wife was when they just moved into the Lane property. And I don't remember how I found out about it, but he offered a, a sleigh riding time at his property with, an, uh, uh, with you know, drinks and ice skating on their pond and everything. And I turned to my wife and I thought, well, this is kind of odd that somebody we don't know would just open it up. But I, we wanted to see the Lane property. We wanted to meet them. And it was a very unique event. And there was a handful of people who took advantage of it. I remember having a great time sledding. And I remember coming back thinking to myself that while this was a great time, it was also very odd that somebody would open up their property to this. And I think part of what the contention is is that uh, there's an unusual nature about how people feel about something they wouldn't do he is willing to take a property that could be privately uh, enjoyed and yet that is not his intention his intention from the beginning from that day that I met he and his wife was to say this should be a community uh, area and he wanted to get involved with the community and everything he's done that I've seen and I've been in, I've been uh, apprised of that he has done and the conversations I've had with him have been addressed toward that toward toward getting people different areas getting farmers uh, involved getting businesses together getting photography and the arts together getting people of uh, like the pride parade getting getting people together the unifier event itself I would hope in my vision of what I see Lunenburg to be, that this would be embraced at some level. Now, I am all for and understand the public safety and public health, and I think all of those should be addressed for events of any size, uh, of the time of the type that he's talking about but I think he's been more than willing to do that and he said that every single meeting that I've been at that he's been here. I would hope that there would be a way with the bylaws, with the zoning, and with what he wants to do with the community, that we would find a way to make that work. Because in the end, I don't, I wouldn't want to live in a community where everybody just stayed in their house and they just stayed with their people. He, he is looking to things to bring people together to actually make it a community. And for that, I take my hat off and I would work to, to help him do that. And he has the area to do it. He's not doing it on a quarter acre parcel that he's going to jam people in. He has a huge amount of property to be able to do it. Uh, he has the, the, the involvement of other people. He doesn't do it alone. And he's, again, more than willing to work with the town in any way they want uh, so that he can meet other people's concerns and meet his own as well. And again, I hope as a community that we can come together and make that happen. I would hate to see that part go away where we didn't have places to meet to bring people of these kind of events that he's bringing to you together. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Allison, uh, 188 and 305 Flathill. Um, as the uh, planning board chair, uh, I can say that we have tried to address some of these issues. Uh, we either updated or added definitions for indoor, outdoor recreation. We added uh, private camp, private club. Um, and I as well was involved with the unifier. I was actually on site uh, for about a month in preparation. Uh, I observed everything that went on. He actually came to this board two different times to reapply for a rescinded license because it was improperly put together for a Sunday. Um, and it was granted both times. There was not one single uh, facet of any of the permits that he was granted that was not lived up to. Um, there were uh, very often police on site. Um, they were very friendly, very happy. Uh, we had one of them holding ducklings. Uh, they asked, they got tours around the house. Uh, it's a really uh, beautiful property. And um, for many years, uh, even before uh, I met Darren, 
I've been uh, an advocate for um, allowing uses such as this on larger properties in general. Um, I'm pretty sure that there really is no definition of a use for a country fair, and that's in residence B, and um, the zoning is, is in place for permanent uses for, for businesses. Uh, special permits are available to be granted for uh, limited use, not, not every day. And if you consider uh, your average house is four people on one acre, then uh, four people per acre would be 560 people on 140 acres. Um, I just, I don't, I, I can feel for people that live in the vicinity that may or may not enjoy music or festive people or happenings going on. Um, but uh, the majority of the people in town, I believe, do. Um, we, uh, we have a deficit right now of recreation, entertainment, things for people to do. Uh, there probably is, there probably are more than one reason that people come here for the schools and once the child is graduated, they leave. Uh, I, would, I would venture to say that one of the larger reasons is there's really nothing for the kids to do here once they've graduated. Uh, and not only that, there are a lot of 40-something kids like myself who like <laughs> to have fun. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Just, just one other thought. We've been addressing these as three permits. Uh, they are three separate permits. Uh, if the board were to perhaps want more data for what it's doing, it might consider granting one of the permits and see how that goes. Uh, just a suggestion. Uh, but we are looking for the three of them. But if the board were inclined to grant the first one and see how it goes, it might provide you with more data to do whatever you're going to do with your special permit process. I'd make a motion that we um, approve the one day entertainment license for the June 8th photography event. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I mean, just I. I'm supportive of all the events. Again, what I understand in this some letter of the law with the zoning issues. I really think we need to wrap that up somehow, not just for this property, but for all the large properties in town to give them an avenue to be viable. Not that it should be a big business, but ways to use the land besides putting houses on it. Because I, <laughs> if, if, if I own that land down there and I was treated and went to the university that Mr. Massey has. I would have sold it for 40B a long time ago. You'd have 70 plus units down there in the Mopus watershed and all the traffic in the world coming in and out of there. So I, I really think we need to find a way to permanently work through this from a zoning end, whether it's our, whether our entertainment license is gonna cover it and clean that up, I, I don't know. But I, again, I'm just, I, I'd like to support these you know, type of you know, peaceful, quiet events to the, and um, I, I think it's great, it's great for the community. Nicely stated, thank you. Well, I know we have a motion and a second, but can we, we're in the, we didn't close the hearing part of it. It's not a formal hearing, but okay. I understand your point. Would you like to speak? I would. Please. Hi, my name is Steve Weaver and I'm from 288 Holman Street and thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, Dr. Massey is an excellent speaker. Uh, he's very skilled at getting his point across. Um, so I think that as uh, gentleman here stated that Mr. Massey, uh, Dr. Massey has been told on numerous occasions to go to the Board of Appeals, to go through proper channels, and he just feels that he can continue to talk and pass through the proper channels um, rather than do that and have you people try to grant entertainment licenses that still isn't even figured out yet. 
um, it is a big burden for the residents of uh, Holman Street. And I think that he should follow the law. And then I think there wouldn't be any question, and this would be put to an end, um, and it wouldn't keep carrying on and carrying <coughs> on. He wants to run a business there. And all of these different events are just a masquerade of doing that. So I'd like him to follow the law. Okay, thank you. On the Lockwood, 91 Main Street. Um, you know, it's um, it, it's always interesting to me, coming from a different culture, how, you know, sometimes I get here and people, they just want to be happy all the time. We're literally, literally talking about, now we're talking about 17 minus 11, so we're going to be six, eight and a half, and another 16 months 11 so you know we're talking about less than 24 hours on the <laughs> on the year of you know being convenienced of going down your street that's that's what we are talking about i mean sometimes we really gotta like take a step back and look at the things as just as they are kind of a big thing with me like and you know and and for me to go up and and complain about a neighbor because of something like that i just find it I find it like crazy to think about, you know, like we really want to do that because to a neighbor and Mr. Massey has been victim of some awful character assassination that I've seen it and I was very upset and I think some of that has been forwarded to you guys and and that's all because we don't want something, we don't like it and therefore we're going to attack it, we're just going to take it out and it's just ridiculous. Now, you know, the Garden Club, I think uh, the building commissioner mentioned, you know, some of these events. I have book club in my house, you know, with Mr. Bowen's wife. Do I have to get a permit for that? You know, and if I put a, a Facebook event announcing to the to my fellow club members, because it's on Facebook, does that mean I have to get a, a permit? I don't, you know. If, I, if I'm having my kids, well, they're in college now, but no, actually, we had Super Bowl party. Seems to be a tradition in my house. I cook and they eat. It's every Super Bowl. Do I have to get a permit for that? You know, there is a, my son puts a, an event out to his friends on Snapchat, but not Facebook, a little harder to capture that. So I, I think we are putting, I, we are really putting Mr. Massey through burdens that we don't put anybody else. The building commissioner also mentioned the property is not zoned for that. Well. St. Boniface is not zoned for selling beer, but it does, right? When they have, they think they have a handful of they events there. They get a permit there. for that. And, you know, and we are doing that. Neither is Stillman. They also sell beer. Um, and, and I think that that's just unfair. The, how much we raise, it, it, how hard we're making for one person. Because we've got a handful of people just, I don't like it. Therefore, I'm just going to do it. And come do it in my house before I hear that argument again. I'll have people over my house, happy to have. Um, you know, drones, um, the land user director mentioned drones. Well, if someone fly drones, if they go above a certain height, they need to have a permit. So I would think that's addressed through the, you, the owner of the drone. And that's all we're saying. Right. <coughs> but, you know, so anyway, so it's really, it's, it's really disheartening to see that this level of pushback for, you know, two hour event and you know three days and and I don't think he should be asked to be putting requests for this kind of private events in his house he's a social guy so what we need to be you know and the people that are not social they're trying to impose that their behavior and their feelings on him that's not fair so anyway that's how I see it Yes. Okay. Oh, no. No, I wasn't oh, going to I address you. you. Something. <laughs> no, I am going to speak, but I'm not to address that. All I'm right. sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah. I wanted to just go back to something general when we talk about the policy um, that's been worked on. Is I think we really need to identify if this is a private event or a public event because that makes a very, very big difference. And I'm hearing it called a private event, but can I go? Sure. 
then it's a pub maybe a public event. And I think we need, no, no, I'm not discussing with you, I'm discussing in general. And so I think what, we broke this down, and, and I'll reference our town manager, when we talk about these different events, you can have public events on public property. So that's like a sporting event, a school, like a parade, public on public. People can request to have a private event on public property. They need a permit for that, maybe a wedding at the gazebo. So that's a private event using municipal land. Um, so that's two of them. And then the other one is a private event on private property. So that's when I have my kid's birthday party and there's 50 screaming kids. I don't need a permit for that. That's private on private. But these may be falling into public events on private property. And that's where they become very, very different because there's so much uncertainty if you open something up to the public and the way things can grow and spread on social media. The idea of having you know, 500 people on a property, even though it's a lot of acres, it's consolidated to a specific space and a specific road, and that's a huge volume of people. So I think the biggest thing that's coming up to me right now is I'm hearing this called a private event, but I believe it's a public I believe they're public events even when we spoke about um, you know, how quickly it, it can spread and, and how to navigate keeping it small enough. I think these are public events, but I guess I'd like that defined maybe by the attorney if as we grant well, these permits, are these public or private events? It, the criteria you speak of is, is clearly was one of the criteria we've been discussing, but it hasn't been finalized as part of our uh, policies. It hasn't been voted on. It hasn't been through any of the public hearing process. So while we can use it as our thought process, it, it, it's really not relevant to sure, some so of Mr. our decisions. Sure, so Mr. Chair, I guess what I'm asking is... Did I see another speaker come in? Yeah. Please. Uh, Brian Frank, 200, 278 Holman Street. So I'm a near abutter. I'm not a direct abutter, but I'm a, an abutter. I also was there when the Unifier Festival happened, and I've been aware of the different endeavors that Dr. Massey has been trying to undertake on his residential property. I think the point of the matter here is this is a residential property that's zoned residential in a residential area. And these are clearly commercial ventures. There's commerce that's happening at these ventures. This is not a private party. This is not a Super Bowl party, a graduation party, a birthday party. And what we've done by ena enabling the Unifier Festival first was set a precedent. And I think of the wrong precedent that this could continue to happen. Now, yes, we're at, he's asking for three events today for the beginning of this year. I think the question that we have to ask ourselves is, does that continue to happen? And do we continue to build precedent that that property, which is, yes, a beautiful piece of property that he has opened up to people to come and tour, and I think that's all great. But when you start to have 350 people, and that affects the neighbors, and the roadways, and the traffic, that's no longer just a gathering of people at a private residence. That is a completely different thing that happens. And I think what I'd like to ask this board to do is consider what the precedent is. Now, we don't have some of the things in place that we talked about, these different permits, different things in the bylaws. Those all should be in place before further things happen. Because I think everybody needs to understand what it is. And if we want to have these events, I think the events are fine. There are plenty of places within the town that these things can be had. And if Dr. Massey really wanted to do this, he could have looked for commercial property that he could host these kinds of things at when he invested. So you know, my, my ask of this board is to think about what does the precedent set, and would we do this in other areas of the town? Just because it's a nice property, and Ansel Adams took photos there, and everything else, doesn't mean that we should set the precedent that property throughout the town could be used for these sorts of commercial ventures when we have zoning laws on the books. We want the zoning to change, apply to get the zoning changed, and go through that process. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to close. Can I just add sure. just something um, in conversations with town council? Um, just not to intermingle zoning and licensing. Um, the board has the licensing authority to issue an entertainment license. Um, that doesn't mean on a parallel track as the building commissioner 
has already stated that it's not allowable under zoning. So the license in effect could be issued, but whether it can be used is another question. Okay. And that falls under zoning. And Mr. Okay. Chair, so is, it, is, is um, what he's saying that we shouldn't confuse zoning and licensing and it wouldn't be it would right be, for us to say, nah, because of the zoning issues, we're not going to permit it. That That's not really applicable. It'd be a permissible reason to deny it, but to know that zoning is on its own parallel track. They can occur simultaneously. So the, um, the board could issue the license with the building commissioner saying, this does not meet zoning requirements. You cannot use that license. All right. Clear as mud. But <laughs> we've, <laughs> Boy, we've, had it, we've, had, mm -hmm. we've had a motion and a second, and we're in the discussion period. I'd like to come back to that. Um, and I'd like to make a comment. I, you know, I, heard, I, I listened very clearly to, to several speakers who I think all articulated quite, quite eloquently their points of view. Um, I think I will, I, I personally can stipulate that all the events that Dr. Massey described are excellent events. I mean, they're, they're events that I'd want to go to. They're events that are terrific for the town. They're events that have all sorts of positive impact on building a community. Um, and I don't think we're here tonight to talk about is this event a good one or is that event a bad one. Um, at the same time, I listened to uh, Attorney Bowen talk about uh, some, I don't want to use the word precedent, but some history where boards of selectmen have made decisions on entertainment licenses regardless of the zoning implications. Um, and I listened to Mr. Alonzo speak of, with all these terrific things that, that Dr. Massey is offering, why don't we all just work harder and get them all approved? Um, having said all that, uh, uh, Adam Burney, our, our, our land use director, has come forward with a memo uh, with five bullet points with several check marks under each of them that require uh, consultation and, and hard work by the Board of Health and the police and the fire and all the different people that have to come together to make these events work. Certainly it's within our purview, number one, to ensure that all those things happen before we approve a, 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 an entertainment license and also perhaps to encourage some of that to go through a little smoother. The one that I can't get through, however, is contrary to what Attorney Bowen said, I don't believe any of the past occurrences occurred after a zoning decision was already made. Uh, the building inspector has made a decision, has uh, issued it, uh, an enforcement letter, and I cannot in good conscience vote for a, a license that would allow uh, for an event on a property that, that our town building inspector said is not appropriate. I would encourage the applicants and, and, and or his attorney uh, to go through the appeal process or the rectification process in that space and get that done post haste and maybe we can get this all done in time for June. But from my point of view, I can't approve the license or any of the licenses if, if in fact the building inspector has already issued uh, an enforcement letter. I, I, I see what I do see what you're saying. I would still I would still like to support the the entertainment license uh, so that Mr. Massey can take our support with him as he goes through the ZBA process. Just I agree. In, in that regard, I'd be willing to condition the approval upon the the zoning approval. I could do that. Excuse me. Uh, we've, we've been planning board have been told time and time again that we cannot condition our approval upon the approval of another group. Yep. 
you're right. Okay, fine. Then, then I, I can't support it. One of the things I was thinking of earlier, and I know we have a motion in a second for something else, but was to extend the hearing so we can do more thinking, learning, and research without saying yes or no. I feel like I would, since we have a lot of uncertainty, I would feel more comfortable leaving it open than potentially denying. So could we um, move it to the April 2nd meeting? I don't think we're going to have any more. She's going to need a zoning decision. I mean, that's the information you're looking for, right? That's what we're hung well, up on. I guess for me, the information is maybe, and if it's provided somewhere, please let me know, um, information on the, um, and we had heard maybe 350, how many people are intended to go, what the controls would be if it's, public or private, I believe they're public events, but can, is there documentation where there's a lot more detail on these each events that we can sort of mull over before we I, grant the permit? I, I think, I think uh, Mr. Passio probably made a, a valid observation that we probably aren't going to have our bylaw through all the various contributors and approved in, in short order and that's what drives those kind of decisions. I agree but before I would give a permit I would want to know what I'm permitting so I feel like I'm lacking details on the events where I say okay this is the size and scope of what we're permitting rather than just sort of a verbal discussion and, and I mean we really only have two lines here for each permit um, maybe more comprehensive information so if we say oh well we will give the permit but instead of 350 maybe could we limit it to 250 I mean we can make the stipulations of the permit um, so I feel like we just need more right. information we, 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 we have a motion in a second does anybody want to withdraw that Well, I, I feel that if, um, I, I guess there is something that it, it, it may be good to limit it to 250, but I feel that um, if, you know, with the Unifier Festival, he went through all of these hoops and, uh, and followed all of these regulations, if we put that he has to follow all of the regulations as outlined in um, Mr. Bernie's memo, I think we have all the information we need. But he won't have solved the zoning issue. Right. And my, the only point I was trying to make as far as kicking it to the next meeting, he's not going to get zoning by then. Zoning by then. So if, if, if the zoning's a thing we're hung up on, then we've got to put it out long enough for the zoning. You know, you know the, I only asked for, for one event, Saturday, June 8th, from 11 to 5. I just... I really think I have enough information to grant that. But if people feel that um, they need more time, then I could withdraw it if we were going to discuss it on April 2nd. Am I missing somewhere where it's written down how many people, et cetera? <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, there were emails sent. You should have them <coughs> sent directly to you. They were copied to every member um, on the stage here. There were two emails. Uh, they were sent to Elaine and then Heather and then all the select people. In addition... Everything that um, was sent to us is in the packet. There were multiple attachments. So if you're talking about numbers, there were limits uh, on people hours, days, certainly since December, as I said, when I or originally met Adam, it's always been that, as already mentioned in Unifier, we would always work with fire, police. Mm. If you asked <coughs> what you're looking for, I might be able to guide where it is. I mean, I'm reading the emails, but I'm just looking for a place where it says size and scope, et cetera, so that when we're approving it, we know what we're approving. I feel sure. like I'm just... One area was the cover letter. Um, yeah. Do you want to just ask, Mr. Sure, Dr. just Lacey? ask the questions. If, so size for each event? Right. As I think I've given the numbers of people, the 350 and the 250 and the 150. Uh, but as I heard, I'm... I'm, I always come here and I say, just give me the number. If, if you're not, as one of the, rep one of the okay. select people said, if you, whatever the contingency is, <laughs> so, so be it. We're, this, 
we're attempting to do something and I give you credit for for working this through sure and so every property is different the photography so one we'll do them yeah. one at a time since that's the one the motions for how sure. what was the <coughs> amount of people you will allow to that one we imagined that I would imagine and what was asked on the license was 350 And is there any music associated with that event? No. <laughs> Did you withdraw your motion, Phyllis? Um. No, I, I don't think so. I think that we have enough information. Then I guess we should vote. All those in favor? Can I make one more comment, please? No, I'm going to have to say no. Okay. Right? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have to say, I don't know what we're eyeing. We haven't put the amounts or anything on it in terms of people. I feel like we were giving a license without stipulating what the license is allowing. So what's your vote? Um, for this particular motion, it'll be uh, nay. And nay for me. For a totally different reason. Mr. Chairman, may I just make a procedural comment? Sure. Uh, I, I appreciate that the board cannot attach a condition of the approval of another board and I appreciate your reluctance to act but appealing the zoning appealing the decision to the zoning board of appeals is now going to cause my client to incur additional legal expenses it would be helpful in him making that decision if he did know how this board would vote if it did meet the zoning requirements and even if this board were to vote in the affirmative and there was still an underlying zoning problem that prohibited him from going forward this board voting in the affirmative would not change that there'd still be an underlying zoning defect if there was one and mr massey would have to address that or proceed at his own peril uh, we we would like to know how this board would act if the zoning was met uh, and would encourage you to consider that and whether there there might be another motion more defined as some member has requested I, I I feel uncomfortable doing a hypothetical uh, vote but but I will tell you that if the zoning issue were resolved I would be in favor of the applications I I, I don't know if anybody else wants to speak on that uh, yeah I mean I, I'm already in favor. I'm already in favor. <laughs> right. Hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> okay. We're going to move on. Mr. Chair, are you voting on the other two? Excuse me? We only had one motion. Does anybody have any other motions? You do have to take action on the other two. Mr. Passios is correct. You have to? Yes. I would like to make a motion that we extend the um, hearing on those events and um, put the other event back on as we gather more information about zoning and details specific to each event. Second that. Any discussion? Just for clarification, is that for the second one or for the second two? Um, um, and all three. It's for to to reconsider do the, the hearing for the other two and then to reopen the um, other event. I really would like to have more specific information for each event as we would go through and consider them and give us more time to um, better understand um, 
for all the information that's here. specific information, like, do you mostly want number of attendees? Is that well, I think that's um, just for the sake of discussion of this, and I'll go back and reference the Unifier event. Um, I got up and spoke in support of it, went to it, studied it, understood it, and then reflected on it after the fact. And so <coughs> maybe four days had been too long. That <coughs> could have been, the permit could have been for three days or two. Um, one thing I know that the current board at that time didn't put any limitations on length of time of music. And I was far away from the festival but could hear it um, one, two, in the morning sometimes I could still hear drums so maybe if the permit had said no music after 10 30 um, things like that and so I feel like if we get more specific then we can find a balance between allowing the event but protecting the abutters and so I feel like rather than just say yes to event I would rather have more information on size and say well these events just seem um, too large for that street or the capacity of traffic seems too big I guess I would like to give these permits with a better understanding of what will become. Like, I was surprised to hear music at one in the morning when the unifier was taking place, but we had not, not we, but the board had not put any restrictions on when the music would stop. They just said yes. So I guess that's where I feel like there could be a better balance if we do say yes to a permit, but find ways to make sure, like I asked, will there be music? we didn't know that there wasn't or was music because these are all things that impact the abutters so I'd rather more specific details when giving out a permit not just in this case but to to anybody you know and that's where I think working on the policy will help and having a form where right in front of me not through emails and a variety of things um, does it say this or that but there's a, just a form that says music yes or no um, you so know it would, I think number it would of be, attendees I think so that, so that the next hearing doesn't drag on it would be good to specify what exactly you need for more information music number of attendees so that he knows what information Correct. He has and then to when bring. we read a motion, we can say we make a motion for the permit that there will be X amount of number of people for this time, this place, this so, date. So, what is your current motion? The current motion is just to continue the hearings to gather more information. But I, I would like to add sort of the caveat to um, say that we will specify what additional information we need, so so we don't have three more sessions of the hearing. Know what I mean? Mm. So could you add that? If I may, uh, you have the power to condition it as you please. If you took a vote tonight and limited it to 250 people between such and such an hour and said no music, we would do that. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions, though. I guess I would still make a motion that we extend the hearings for these two and the other permit um, to another week. Again, it's just more for thought gathering and, and data collection, um, revisiting, learning more about the zoning. Although it's not related, it's certainly impacting um, my thoughts about just making sure that we're in compliance. Um, Etc. But are we going to send Mr. Is, is there a second? Well, I'm trying to understand. I you know, it was seconded. I did second it. Oh, okay, okay, so we're discussing. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, go ahead, Mrs. Luck. Uh, no, I, I would just like to be able to tell the applicant exactly what we want to know. Uh, well, we can prepare what we want to ask. A list of conditions, something, because. Because, you know, we could be done tonight if we came up with the conditions. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my list of conditions would be that it, they satisfied the comments laid out by the planning director, mm -hmm. the news director. Mm -hmm. And if you want to say no music or put a number on it, too, that's, I feel like as long as the department heads' needs are satisfied and there's no music, fine. Uh, the hours are, that he's got on here are pretty reasonable. Very um, reasonable. And I you could say 350 f people for it all of the events i mean it's just a cap you doesn't need to hit it <laughs> it doesn't mean 300 people are just going to show up I, I don't i can't imagine what other information i need than that right other than 
making sure the zoning's satisfied. Well, I guess my motion to extend the hearings is more probably based on the fact that it's 1018 in that we can do this work but do it with a clearer mind and, and just extend the process um, so that we're not necessarily saying no but we're giving more time to reflect just based on. So that's, I mean, that's the motion is just to put this on the agenda at a future meeting. Continue. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Okay. So we're going to put it on the agenda for a future meeting. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Our next item is a appointment for the animal inspector for a term May 1st, 2019 to April 30th, 2020. Kathy Cuomo. 806 West Street. Okay, I would like to make a motion that we appoint the animal inspector for the term of May 1st, 2019 to April 30th, 2020. Uh, Kathy Como from 806 West Street. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Town manager report. Summer Street Road Reconstruction Update. The contractor has continued drainage installation throughout the winter with a small crew. It is anticipated that the drainage for the project will be complete by the end of March or beginning of April. The curb sidewalk subcontractor is scheduled to return to the site in April as soon as the weather warms up sufficiently to begin concrete work. Pulverization east of the Baker's Brook Brit Brook Bridge to the Lemonster Line is scheduled to begin mid-April. It is anticipated this portion of the roadway will be paved to intermediate grade by Memorial Day. At that point, they will begin pulverizing the last section of the project in Lemonster. <coughs> there is a reminder about the informational sessions that will be held by Nexamp on Community Solar on Wednesday, April 10th at 6.30 in the Lunenburg Middle School Collaborative Room, D-132, and Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. in the library. And a letter will uh, be sent out to all residents in town. Americans with Disabilities Committee, now that the town has received the Attorney General's approval of our bylaw changes from the November 2018 Special Town Meeting, the amended Americans with Disabilities Committee changes are in effect and the vacancies advertised. I've reached out to the two residents that were interested in joining the newly revitalized committee and I'm asking for one selectman to volunteer. Appointments can be made at the April 2nd selectman's meeting. DLTA application for ADA self-evaluation and transition <coughs> plan. Monachusett Regional Planning Commission is currently accepting applications for district local technical assistance that provides technical assistance to, to its communities. In requesting a letter of support from the board for MRPC to assist in updating our ADA self-evaluation and transition plan. I had applied for a grant through the Mass Office on Disability this past fall, but it was not granted for this very such purpose. MRPC had provided the scope of work for that application, and they are familiar with the tasks that need to be accomplished. Simultaneously, I know the Planning Board is interested in possibly submitting DLTA applications, and if we need to prioritize our project submissions, I would work with them to ensure we identify our top priority. Rental and use of space at the T.C. Passios building, the Revolving Museum. The founder of the Revolving Museum, Jerry Beck, reached out to me this past week that he has recovered and would like to renew the efforts to use space at the T.C. Passios in exchange for community art programs. I will be working with town council and a uh, use of space agreement in exchange for in-kind <coughs> services. The extended day program, the school superintendent and I are continuing to discuss the possibility of moving <coughs> the extended day program to the TC Passios by examining the cost of operating out of the TC Passios. 2020 U.S. Census Track and Block Group Boundaries. This spring, MRPC will update the Census Track and Block Group Boundaries for its member municipalities through the Census Bureau's Participant Statistical Areas Program, 
PSAP. Census tracts and block groups must be updated every 10 years so they continue to adhere to population and housing unit thresholds established by the Census Bureau. MRPC is asking each member community to designate a municipal staff representative to provide them with information regarding recent developments that will inform the delineations. I am recommending the land use director be the respondent to provide this feedback. <coughs> he is gladly as accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Recycling education campaign. As part of the recycling educational campaign, I've been posting recycling tips on the town Facebook page, and we'll also be sending these to the Lunenburg Ledger. These include messages about cleaning plastic bottles, soda cans, and other items, so they can be turned into new usable products, that plastic bags and plastic wrap are not recyclable and are the town's number one contaminant and that with the rise of online shopping, more than 6.1 million tons of cardboard a year is generated at home, but only 30% of this is recycled. These tips are received through MassDEP's Recycle Smart site, and information about recycle, the Recycle Smart program is available on our website. Some updates on maintenance and repair projects that are in the process or in the works for facilities and infrastructure. The Ritter Building HVAC project is almost complete. The funding for this project was through a previous year's capital article. The alarm system and security system is being upgraded at the town hall right now, as well as the replacement of the, all the old smoke detectors. The Cemetery Commission is requesting to transfer funds from the sale of cemetery lots at the annual town meeting to, um, for the building materials to complete the building at North Cemetery. The DPW will undertake culvert repairs on Northfield Road and Sunset Lane this summer, and as well as repairs to the Townsend Harbor <coughs> Bridge this summer. And they were recently awarded a small bridge grant for 380000 that will address repairing the structural deficiencies to the Pleasant Street um, Bridge with an undetermined schedule at this point. The Council on Aging Director um, and Council on Aging members uh, already announced the Red Sox World Series trophies coming to the Eagle House on April 7th, 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. And that the Save the Date for the Dementia Friendly Kickoff is Monday, May 20th at 6 p.m. at the library. And just an update on meetings. Town Council office hours will be March 28th from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Finance Committee has a budget meeting with Public Access um, Committee at 7 p.m. this Thursday, as well as uh, the Administration Unclassified and Debt Service at 7.30, and the Town Meeting Warrant Articles at 8 p.m. And I'll be attending a Mass Municipal Managers Association meeting Thursday in Boylston for part of the day, going to the Parks Commission meeting that night uh, before the Finance Committee meeting, and <laughs> a recycling summit um, uh, put on by Mass Recycle on Monday. That's all I have. I <coughs> sure, can you do it here, uh, Dave? Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street, if I could, through the chair to uh, Heather. Uh, the Cemetery Commission, uh, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that the cemetery does this on an annual basis, transfers money out of that account, uh, also for operating expenses, uh, to cover their operating expenses during that fiscal year. Uh, I agree it does include part of the building costs, but that transfer is also some miscellaneous mm -hmm. items that uh, they yep. need to pay for on an annual basis, and they do this every year. Right. I think oh. um, the number is actually 22000 out of the 35000 that they'll be requesting is for the building. Right. I happen to be at the meeting that they calculated right. that. Thank you. Right. Well, Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Chair, if I may comment to Heather, mm -hmm. um, that I would um, be happy to volunteer um, to be the selectman on the um, ADA committee. Okay. I was also okay. going to volunteer, too. Mm -hmm. you, you Do you want to take that up at the yeah. next meeting? It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you pulse. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions. 
<coughs> on the re recycling education, is there any information on the website? The Mass um, Smart Recycle Smart program information is on the website under the DPW page. Great, great. Do we have any hard copies anywhere, like at Town Hall or at the Ritter? Of the recycling tips or right right well you know whatever information you get yeah. no because then you'd have to recycle them <laughs> <laughs> well, i suppose um you know i have um on the next amp thing the sewer commission is looking into the next amp program for solar credits to keep the cost um of, of its users from rising and um there was a spreadsheet of town entities now receiving credits and it looks like on the spreadsheet there are three town accounts for a total of like fifteen thousand dollars that aren't receiving credits yet is that in the works that were identified as accounts that were supposed to receive credits well i mean they they aren't I'd receiving have to see the it, spreadsheet i it will um it you know the, the um, boys and girls club was one <coughs> And there were two other ones that didn't weren't receiving credits, and I would think that we'd want to do something so they were a part of the program because n now's the time when they can sign up for the program. You, you may be talking about net metering credits that the town receives through a um, net metering agreement versus community solar agreement that this is referring to. The, the, con the community solar that's currently in place, did the town participate in that or was that totally? The, the one that's the project that's up and running in Fitchburg. Right, yeah, right. The town can participate in and there's yeah, plenty of has, space has to it, be signed ha up. Has it in the past? I mean, are we signed up for any of that, do you know? The town has its own net metering agreements okay, okay. where we receive net metering credits for. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, you know, the, just that there were three entities that weren't receiving any credit, so I was thinking that maybe... If you can get me the information, because I'm not... Okay. I'd have to see it to... Okay, sure, I'll send it to you. Any other? No, no, I'm all oh, set. Thanks. Okay. With the um, board, if I drew up a letter, authorize the chairman to sign the letter of support for the um, for which for the DLTA application and I'd work with planning board obviously on uh, if they're gonna submit any projects yeah I'd sure I just want a motion to uh, send a letter of support for the DLTA grant more specific than that? No. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. That it? That's it. Okay. Uh, next item of current business, creation of a land acquisition committee. Uh, what we're looking for is one member from the planning board, one from open space, one from the selectmen, and one from conservation. Uh, that's relative to the discussion we had at the executive session last week. Um, can I get a motion to create that committee? I make a motion that we create. Where is it? Can you read off the oh, I have, Excuse me? Can you read off the list again? Uh, one from planning, one from open space, one from selectmen, one from conservation. Is that what you have? I have, um, well, two open space members, one by proxy, right. a planning board member. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. that, right. So how many total do you have? Five. Five. Yeah, so two from open mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. so I, two from open space. So mm -hmm. I make a motion that um, the Board of Selectmen create a land acquisition committee consisting of the five members mm -hmm. <laughs> the town manager just listed. Second. Can I ask a question? Is there a question before you vote? Sure. Maybe a very logical answer to this, but I'm wondering why there isn't a citizen at large on that committee. Thank you. Okay, this is a this is a committee that would be looking at the potential land acquisition to recommend to the selectmen who would recommend it to town meeting. So it's it's the very early stages, and and it's it, it it's going to get plenty of opportunity to get public public input. And this was the recommendation of Open Space, who kind of owns that responsibility. Uh, and 
we had a volunteer from the Board of Selectmen in Mrs. Luck. Uh, maybe we can do that on, we confirm that on next week's, at the sure. same time when we start talking about assignments, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, minutes. We didn't. What? <coughs> was oh, there a motion and a vote? second? Yeah, no discussion. Vote. We forgot to vote. Sorry. Um, so who's, who seconded? Did you second? Yes, okay. I and I just wanted, for, um, for the sake of discussion, do we need to define this group or their purpose, or you know how long they'll meet or what they're meeting about? Um, because I feel like we should attach more information to this. I mean, if I was looking at it as a citizen, the creation of a land acquisition committee, acquiring what, where, when, um, do we need to assign more information in terms of, of the committee? Well, in our discussions, um, the um, Open Space Committee chair said it would be similar to the, the way the committee operated when they sought out the lane property. So this kind of like a, a, a model Correct, but we always identified and discussed the lane property in terms of land acquisition. I just feel like we should identify more information um, for the sake of the citizens, because even though we went into executive session on the topic, I'm not so sure that, <coughs> that it's really warranted or necessary to not provide more information. Um, I, or if we the, would be the whole reason the whole reason you go into executive session is because you don't want to tip the town's hand on what land they're interested in. But this land has been offered to us to purchase, and so it may not fall under the attorney general's guidelines in terms of um, we've been approached at a conservation commission to purchase this land in an open meeting, um, and so you really have to prove that there would be a negative effect to being public. And if if the owner is offering to sell it to the town, then um, I don't know how it might technically may or may not fall into executive session criteria because we're not really in a, there's a gray area there, but I don't understand why it's being done without information for the public. Could I suggest possible wording? Sure. Uh, so for the charge of the committee to negotiate the purchase of land that would become conservation land to be brought back to the Board of Selectmen and ultimately need town meeting approval? Something of that sort, but I don't know why we wouldn't include mm -hmm. in that description exactly as is what parcel. Since it's been offered to be sold to us, we're not really mm -hmm. looking to buy it. We're being offered the opportunity to buy it. So I would support just throwing out there what it is we're up to. We had a motion and a second. Anybody want to amend that motion, or shall I take a vote? Fine with the way the motion was. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Just go with a nay, because I would have liked it to be this Excuse me? differently. I'm going with a nay, just because I would have preferred we provide okay. more information. Okay. Minutes. We have minutes for the March 5th meeting. Warrants. Uh, accounts you. payable in the amount of $168,836.11. Payroll in the amount of $771,939.25. Accounts payable in the amount of $233,391.91. Anything else we got signed? Okay. Any action file issues? Yes, I have one. Um, I was made aware at a recent charter review committee meeting of the planning board vice chair's resignation letter addressed to the town manager and dated February 4th, 2019. I would like to request that BOS members receive a copy of this and all other resignation letters as well as any other letters of complaint received over the past two years by the town manager directly or any that might have been addressed to the BOS. I feel that this information needs to be made available in a timely manner, hopefully no later than the next BOS meeting. Okay. Any committee reports? Uh, yes. Uh, 
Oh, I just wanted to let the community know that at the last Charter Review <coughs> Committee meeting, um, it withdrew the revision to change the town clerk position to appointed. Many of the previously proposed changes have also been removed. Lunenburg is currently a member of the Central Mass Regional Stormwater Coalition and the Statewide Stormwater Coalition. Both groups are working tirelessly to assist communities in meeting the requirements of the new SM MS4 <coughs> permit, which requires all communities to mitigate the unwanted effects of stormwater runoff, such as polluted waterways and flooded streets. The, the uh, Central Mass Coalition just received a $25,000 <coughs> grant. Um, it's going to develop 20 MS4 permit, permit standard operating procedures and templates, um, which will be available to all towns. The proposed standard operating procedures um, will include lots of things that the town could use and if the town used these it would significantly reduce the amount of money we're spending on stormwater consultants. The statewide stormwater coalition received a hundred seventy thousand um, dollar grant and it will significantly expand the coalition's Think Blue stormwater public awareness campaign. So congratulations to all involved. These things are great. Today I intended two meetings at DEP where groups of WPI students have been tasked with helping the coalitions. One is creating a curriculum for fifth grade students on stormwater. It's currently being piloted in several communities and is undergoing further refinement. The other group is working on the Think Blue Public Outreach and Education Campaign. Our dollars are being put to good use here. That's it. Anybody else? I just came up with a quick question. Um, did we vote at the last meeting on what we're doing about town meeting dates? And why wasn't that back on the agenda? Town meeting dates? Yeah, yep. it is on the agenda. It's it number on two on old business. It's still there. Old business. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and is there a stop to? Do we the, have yeah, a that should have been taken off the vote? May be taken. Um, do we have a limit on how late we're meeting tonight? I've just sent a second babysitter <laughs> um, to cover for the first. Um, as soon as we get done, you know, uh, I think we're I think we're pretty close to the finish line. Yeah. I know the planning board stops at 10:30, and they have a, a, a halt where they have to vote to continue. We might want to put something like that in motion. So, we do have to get through um, the annual town meeting warrant articles, the ones that relate to the board putting them on, right? Because the deadline for articles is Monday, the 25th, and um, unless you had a special meeting. On yeah, the, it's uh, just I would like to have a clear mind for discussion. And for those who don't know, we had a mm -hmm. selectman's meeting today at one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's a lot of hours of meeting in one day with some important stuff still ahead. Actually, very important. Well, unless I hear a motion, we're going to keep going. I would make a motion to adjourn and set up a special meeting to handle these um, important topics. Um, at a, a, a more reasonable time. I guess I'll second the motion for discussion. Any discussion? I'm already here, so I'm, re I'm ready to go. Do you have enough time to post a, a meeting before you're here? Are you going to be able to make the deadline? You have to meet during the day. When? Monday. I object to that just in the fact that the public can't attend the meeting in the daytime. I understand. Okay. The only reason I made it is just because I want to give it time and opportunity for discussion that I think at quarter to 11 we're, we're lacking. Well, let's take a vote then and see who wants to stay and get through this and who wants to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, we say aye. 
Aye. Opposed? No. Nay. No. Let's finish it up. Okay. Uh, obviously, I understand if you have obligations. You know, no, I just, it's, it's, it, okay. I think I like uh, how the planning board sets 1030 as an end. I think it's. it's we're not the planning board. Um, I can kind of get through the second item of old business in saying that in referencing what Mrs. Luck just said, we did take, uh, the, the Charter Review Committee did take two of the more controversial uh, items and took one off altogether and, and kind of skinny the other one down quite a bit uh, to the point where what was presumed that might be a, a real long article and there's no way to judge town meeting but <laughs> you know it may not be as long we still do have uh, 38 I believe or thereabouts Warren articles uh, several of them having to do with marijuana my personal belief is that even though there are several marijuana um, articles we'll probably have one discussion about it and then the yeah. the, the six others so kind of they move follow, very quickly, follow away yep. uh, and I, I, what I was going to recommend is there's been a lot of input from the public around you know whether we should be uh, formally saying as we went into it that the continuation would be on a Monday night or the following mm. Saturday, and we did get a letter from uh, uh, from Mr. Floyd today. He wasn't going to be able to be with us tonight, but he repeated his his request that it be moved to a Saturday. I've heard other people say that, you know, traditionally we've always moved it to a Monday if we had to. Uh, I was going to suggest that we hold our town meeting on Saturday, beginning at nine o'clock. Hopefully, we'll get through it all before uh, we fade we will not break for lunch um, maybe we can get it all done by Saturday afternoon if it if it requires a continuation I assume the moderator will continue it based on input from the group on whether it's on a Monday night or the following Saturday or whatever mm -hmm. uh, so we I, can take a vote <laughs> before we adjourn right I mean at, at town yeah, meeting exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Monday or Saturday exactly but it's 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 my thought that that agenda item for us tonight is that we're going to hold a town meeting on one day, continue it if we have to, and we're not going to depart from tradition by stating that it's going to go till Monday night. Okay. Yes, sure. Which is, which is something that was on, yeah, on you the know, radar. I, you know, we've, we've removed several things from, from the, the proposed charter changes, so I do think the charter changes are going to roll fairly quickly. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we have our uh, annual town meeting on Saturday, May 4th, starting at 9 a.m., um, and that we don't announce a formal second day, and that will be dealt with if necessary. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we just have the ATMs. Let's see what we can do there. Okay. Which, which ones do we have to deal with? 21, 22, and 23. And now, if I'm not mistaken, we we still should deal with this, but this is also going to be dealt with Thursday night. Is that okay, true? The money articles. Okay, just the money articles. Yes. Okay. They discussed on Thursday night. The public okay. hearing, the finance committee's public hearing, is next Thursday, the 28th, starting I'm at 6:30. Not mistaken. Did we already vote on Article 21? I think we made a motion of some sort. I, I don't think last week before. no they had an appointment and mm -hmm. we took a vote in motion regarding something to do with um Barrigo. they had a 710 appointment and i remember taking a vote for the old primary school mm -hmm. no nope. 21, 21. Barrigo solar i way. thought we already did that but we can okay i think we got a different set of um, in the thing yeah. it says it says yeah. <laughs> okay we got to deal with the one gotta, oh i have a printout yeah you got to deal with the one that's in here the last look at this one meeting. <laughs> it's been updated since i just got this two days ago all right so let's go with the one that's in your computer okay. so 21 care custody yeah. and control of the primary school that, that's always what she was talking about she's talking about the beret going okay yeah. You asked the, it to be reordered. So mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was, the warrant was reordered, and this is what you're looking at. Okay. Um, here. So the Borrego was put towards the end. 
I'm sorry, I just got this from Elaine, but um, <coughs> where are the um, articles in the um, okay, there we go. Yeah, 35, right? It's 35. Okay. Well, we're on 21 now. Okay. These yeah, ones. She was just looking for the Pareto yeah, solo. Trying. Okay. 21. Okay. So how do you want to do this? Just So the ones you need to vote whether to include or not include on the warrant are 21, 22, 23, and 24. Move we include articles 21 through 24 as written in the draft ATM warrant data 31419. Second. Any discussion? Sure. We haven't um, publicly written or discussed these. So for anybody watching or trying to be involved, they don't even know what our articles are. I very closely followed other um, boards and committees when they put together warrant articles. They actually are dealt with at open meetings over a large variety um, of meetings and discussions, um, hearings and whatnot. And so people know what the articles are going to be, like the uh, marijuana articles were built over um, many, many months. So we are making a motion to um, accept these articles that we've never um, formulated or discussed at an open meeting. Be happy to read them if you'd like me to. Where did they come from? From discussions that we've had at this board in open meeting. But we didn't write these. We discussed the topics and the town manager formulated them. With the help of the town council. It feels like we've talked about this for a very long we've time. We've talked about them, but we didn't make articles together. And other boards and committees create their articles together over discussions and wordings and changes. We, I haven't personally had the opportunity at an open meeting to put any input into this language, and yet here it is. I think we all know very well how you feel about these, as you've expounded it No, I'm times. just talking about I want to participate in making the language, and that these exist, yet they weren't created at an open meeting. That has nothing to do with my opinion they on that. They were created at several open meetings. I've never participated in the discussion of writing the language of any of these articles. Yet they're already in the warrant, and they've the been in the they've been in the draft warrant for quite a while. How'd they get and there? It's I been a draft it's... warrant for quite a while. But we didn't draft them. That's not our job. I feel like they should be created at an open meeting, and the language should be directed by us. I feel we did that. I do feel like we've talked about these topics at great length and though you're right we did not draft the language together we certainly were aware of the intent of the articles and I've seen these articles and I feel like I'm ready to say I that I agree with them putting putting them on the warrant I agree that these topics have been around, but I would think it would be nice in the future that the board actually creates the articles, that we actually have put some effort into drafting and discussing the language here. Um, I requested a couple days ago a printout and found it funny that we have articles on the warrant that we haven't actually created together in an open meeting. Well, th the bulk of... of of these articles is legalese that has to be in there that you can't really craft. But I'm just, I'm just basing it on attending a lot of other meetings where the things that are in there have been um, discussed at meetings and they've created the articles. Um, you know, the language is going to go to town council and come back to us, but this hasn't gone and come back. It just exists and I, f I feel... Well, we clearly disagree that I believe I like professionals to do what they do best and for us to give them content and review output. So we've had a motion. But we've we didn't a make a vote to second. give this content to anybody to even work on in order for somebody to we work on We have given this content two years worth of our time and effort. <laughs> I'm just talking about creating articles for a warrant specifically. We've had a motion and a second. Unless you want to stay till midnight. Can we have a vote? All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay, and I apologize that nobody even knows what our articles are. Are they the only four we have to do tonight? No, everything else the board has voted on as far as the articles before you that... Uh, Will these articles be on the website? So you still have one more meeting to uh, sign the warrant, which is April 2nd, before it has to go to, to uh, print. So, but you, this is, the reason it's on the, the agenda tonight is because the warrant closes for article submission on Monday at four. So this is the last meeting before that occurs. So, so on there'll be no the, there'll be no additions to it, but there may be there an may opportunity be for from another department, right? Or, but I mean, after the warrant closes, there'll be no additions before our next meeting, correct? And then we'll and just have an opportunity to see that gets sent to sorry. no, that's <laughs> okay. Gets sent to town council for review if he has any further language changes mm -hmm. on the April second meeting. Okay, you would sign off on that. Yeah. So, does it uh, come on the website after that? Yes. Okay. And if so, I'm not mistaken, just for my information, the the articles are relative to the to the charter review or have have not been updated yet. Correct. Right. Okay. The one um, concerning the town clerk was removed um, after the last meeting, mm -hmm. and. I know. I know. Steve met with town council right. to make sure everything was all but, set. But this version it's doesn't have the other changes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Council still has to weigh in on that. Right. Okay. So. So people will have a month or so to. to you know, we should probably mention that at our meetings. That the yeah. warrants online. So you take a look. Put it in the put it in the ledger or something too. So that's it. That's all. Mm -hmm. All right, our upcoming meetings are the 2nd, the 9th of, and we have another one, right? You have, um, your meeting with the planning board on Monday at 6.30. So oh, yeah, that's a joint it. appointment. We get a live one? Yes. She seems very qualified, too. Okay. I'll be interested to see if she's going to run. Yeah, right. You hope well, you would have to hope. Oh, well, yeah, well, she probably can't, right? Well, I don't know. Wait? I don't know. That's the point. I think that's been a question that's been asked at every appointment. Yeah. No, we but I mean, is it too late? Is it too late to to submit papers uh, for the, for this one? I you know. Papers is uh, <coughs> uh, Monday the twenty fifth, and we're meeting Monday the twenty fifth. <laughs> I guess we'll know then. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment from the public, Mr. Passios? Oh, no, I have, I have, while waiting for him, if she, if we were, she's appointed on the twenty fifth, would she just serve for the, until that the election, one year? Until the election, not even a year, couple, three, couple, couple of days. Months. Oh, then she'd have to be reappointed. <clears throat> no, no, she'd have to win the election. There's people, there's people that are running for all three seats. Oh, so she could run two, but mm -hmm. there are people running oh, for all three oh. seats. Oh, jeez. Sorry. Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street. First of all, I would like to say that unless those articles were changed dramatically, uh, anybody that's been paying attention, including me, and I'm speaking for myself, have seen it on three agendas previous to this, and I understand what you just put on, like I say, unless you totally change those four articles. So uh, I'll leave that alone. It's getting late. Um, secondly, uh, I think this board needs to find a way to come to meetings more prepared. Um, I have a lot of conversations out on the street with many people in town. Uh, I frequent a couple of restaurants on a regular basis for breakfast, so on and so forth. And all I hear is, all I hear from this board is we need more information, we need more information, we need more information, and then they don't take any votes. Um, and the last very pointed comment I will make, and this is a quote from many people, that out on the street it's felt that this board is the most dysfunctional board in the town. Thank you. Any public comment from the board? Um, sure. Um, my public comment in regards to the warrant articles is just sort of in regards to our um, goal of communication that when it would have been nice if we read them into the record, although, you know, um, some 
guests, you know, we may have two or three guests that follow closely. For people who are watching at home, they may not be able to link up to the technology. It would be nice if we verbalized that of what we're doing, if we read out the articles, maybe voted them into the warrant individually. Um, I feel like we've sort of just um, put a lot of information um, assuming people are following along without giving them the opportunity to follow along and there's sort of a difference if we read the articles um, had a little bit of discussion about each one um, they're really important articles they're about conveying municipal land and I think they um, warrant discussion publicly I offered to read them no and we didn't. didn't didn't ask me to anybody else Good night, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Most of you, <laughs>